college football Saturdays on Fox Sports Net. It's game time, baby. You ready? Let's go. You know when the action's on. Choose what side you're on. Speed and power build the squad. Let's go, let's go. One yard can change the odds. Bands and cheerleaders are getting it on. Just yards to the zone. The game is on. 60 minutes on the clock. Players looking in. You still the rock. Let the defense line them up. QB trying to pass them up. Come on. In the great state of Oklahoma, it is known as the Bedlam Series, and do they know how to have a good time. Brilliant weather for the matchup between the Cowboys and the Sooners, and a very determined look on the face of Quentin Griffin, especially after what happened last year. College Football Saturday, presented by Kia Zera. Welcome to the Stillwater. As the number three team in the nation, the Oklahoma Sooners, the winners of the Big 12 South, take on the Oklahoma State Cowboys. And revenge on the mind of the Sooners after what happened here, or at least in Norman last year. Josh Fields, 94 seconds left of the game, or is Sean Woods, the game winner. A stunned group of Oklahoma Sooners. And in the first season for Les Miles, an orange bat. Hi, everybody. I'm Joel Myers alongside Dave Lapman. Welcome to Stillwater. Well, Dave, in each of the last two seasons, the Sooners have been as good as any team in college football. This year, they feel like they're even better because of the balance they have now with a better ground game. And they run that football. Griffin is the key to it. This kid's unbelievable. 5'7", 190 pounds. He can make you miss. Deceptively strong. Tremendous balance. Can balance himself with either hand or either foot. He's very, very tough to knock off his feet. Defensively, they have a Buckus Award finalist for the best linebacker in college football in Teddy Lehman. This guy was a high school sprinter on his track and field team. I'll tell you, he makes big play after big play. 6'3", 235, runs 4'4". He's a size-speed ratio nightmare. Well, the Cowboys of Oklahoma State have a good thing going, and it's only going to get better in the passing game with Josh Fields, a sophomore, and his favorite target, a junior, Rashawn Woods. And Rashawn Woods, I think, is one of the best receivers in college football. He does everything well. Great, precise route runner. Gets in, out of his, in and out of his cuts so very, very well. And then when the ball is in the air, he makes the contested catch. He gets himself in position because he times his jump so well, and he's got that such tremendous body control. And then finally, the catch. Andre he's got Cowboys. oversized hands for his body type, and he's very, very soft-handed. So he catches everything in his catching radius. He's the real deal. The Sooners still have national championship aspirations. Can they get it done, though, against their arch rivals? Well, it's been a year of redemption for Nate Hibble. It's paid off as he's come through after the injury earlier this season with their starting quarterback. Josh Fields looks for a second straight win over the Sooners. College Football Saturday presented by Kia Sierra welcomes you back for the 97th edition of the Bedlam Series. And yeah, joining now the third member of our team, let's head downstairs with Eric Clements. Eric. Joel, thank you very much. You know, in the continuation of this Bedlam Series, throw all national rankings and statistics right out the window. The last two games have been decided by a total of eight points. In last year's Oklahoma State 16-13 upset at Norman, they held the Oklahoma running game to zero net yards. And if they're to shut down the run again this afternoon, big six foot five, 200 190 pound defensive tackle Kevin Williams will play a huge role. Coaches on both sides of the football say nobody in the nation has played the position any better than number 58 this year. He leads all Oklahoma State interior linemen with tackles for loss with 10, also has four sacks. Oklahoma's going to have to keep a body on number 58 if they're to run the ball successfully today. We are ready for the continuation of the Bedlam Series. The players are ready. The fans are ready here at Lewis Field. We'll be ready with the opening kickoff in just a few moments. You stay where you are. Saturday on Fox Sports Net. Brought to you by Kia Zera. One company, countless solutions. By Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. By Acura. Experience the performance today at your local Acura theater. And by Campbell's Chunky Soup. Soup that eats like a meal. In only his fourth year as the head coach of the Oklahoma Sooners, Bob Stoops with a phenomenal winning percentage. Great road record. Now, what a job they have done when it comes to just simply stopping the opposition. They excel defensively, 
It sets up their offense in great field position. And ever since he arrived, it has turned things around in Norman. But the Cowboys are hoping for the same thing from their head coach in only his second season. But already his second season, they are bowl eligible. Unless Miles pulled it off last year. A dramatic 16-13 win on the road in Norman. So two of the guys that we really like to work with and talk with in the Big 12. Now we're lucky because we come in early and we get to spend time with people like Les Miles and Bob Stoops. And we thank them for all their help all year long. And that's Gary Barnett. We can go down the list of the oh, yeah. people that we've worked with, like Mike Leach at Texas Tech, Quentin Griffin. Do you think he wants it a little bit? Because of Quentin Griffin this year, Oklahoma already has 680 more yards on the ground in 11 games than they had in 12 games all last season, Dave. Well, Quentin Griffin's got 1,450 yards, and he's been so efficient in getting those, averaging 6.8 yards per rush, third best in the NCAA. Very, very productive running back. Still a shot at the national championship game for the Oklahoma Sooners. They'll need a win today and then need help. Well, Somebody State. beating Miami, either Syracuse today or Virginia Tech next week, Dave. Right, Ohio State's in. Miami's got uh, Cuse up in the dome today, but they seem to be handling things pretty well early on, and then they play Virginia Tech in Miami, a home game. Tough task for the Hokies, who've lost three in a row. Back deep. As Cole Farden will kick it away. Antoine Savage over to the far side. Antonio Perkins to the near side. And we are ready for game number 97 of the Bedlam Series. Good to have you with us on Fox Sports Night. Classic football weather. In Stillwater, Oklahoma. And here we go. Good kick. It'll be Perkins from the three. And a lane up the middle. He's belted at the 22. Otherwise, he's gone. He is straight up the hash. But Vernon Grant, the defensive back, puts him down. Offensively for the Sooners, Nate Hibble, the senior from Hazelhurst, Georgia, transferred from the Bulldogs program. And what a young group. Out of their first 10 on the offensive line, seven of the 10 freshmen or sophomores. Griffin, exceptional running back, Savage faking the wide receivers along with Will Peoples and Trent Smith, an award winning tight end, the senior from Clinton, Oklahoma. So Hibble will start it off in the shotgun. He's at 56% of his passes this year, 17 scores, Smith's his target, and he loses yardage. Loses about three on first down. Albert Craig, the safety, all over him, and Darren Williams, the first one in. Hey, so the sophomore from Fort Worth, Texas, the first one on the stop. Darren Williams made a great reaction to the play. They tried the little tight end screen, although the tight end lined up in the slot. Kiesera starting 11 defensively, and it is a 4-2-5, Dave, which should play well against a team like the Sooners that likes to put it up on a regular basis. I'll call it a loss of two. It'll be second and a dozen. Griffin, get him as many touches as possible. And good yardage across the 25. A little swing pass out to the 29-yard line for a gain of nine, tripped up by the redshirt freshman. Outside linebacker Paul Duran. That's saying something to knock Griffin off his feet. Tremendous balance. Not a lot to get a hold of, is there, Dave? Uh, he doesn't have a whole, whole lot of hitting surface at 5'7", 190 pounds. Deceptively strong. A lot of his strength in his lower body. His legs are put together. Squat 635 pounds. So the first third down of the day, it belongs to the Sooners. Keewan Jones, a redshirt freshman from James, Oklahoma, takes over in the backfield. And Hibble is going to throw for it. Popping it over to Smith. He's hit, and he's dropped again for a loss. Again, Darren Williams on the coverage. Kirk Milligan in on the hit. And in fact, goes Donnelly, 86, not Smith, 88. They, they tried to break a little bit of a, a, little bit of a, 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 a deal where they run the ball every time you bring in the tight end to run that power eye formation, Lance Donnelly, they threw it to him. But the thing that Oklahoma State did so well in that series was tackle as soon as the catch was made. No yards after catch. Gabe Lindsay waiting for the punt from Blake Ferguson, who comes in with a 39-yard average. He's working downwind, and it's a low wobbler. And did a clip. Lindsay on the way by. No. Awkwardly, he went by the football and got a break. So the Cowboys have great field position. 
for the first possession of the contest, led by a sophomore quarterback from right here at Stillwater High School, Josh Fields. That's he incredible. beat him last year. That's incredible. 25 touchdowns, nine interceptions. Big guys on the corners. The tackles Russell and Eaton. Tatum Bell. What a force he has been in the backfield behind Mike Denard. Lewis Woods, the award and record setting wide receiver. And Billy Bajima, also only a sophomore from Oklahoma City, a tight end. They spread the defense. Five wide receivers, empty backfield, one of the middle screen. Fields recognized they were going to take it away and throws it away. Now, that's something he wouldn't have done earlier in the year. So they took away the middle screen effectively. Their flag, Joel. Defensively for the ninth best defensive unit in the nation, Wilkerson Harris, Klein, and Jackson. Tommy Harris, he's a candidate for a number of trophies at the end of the year. Jackson Mitchell and Lehman, who's an award winner and a Buckus Award finalist. Woeful can straight on the corners, and Bassey and Everidge are the safeties. That gets disjointed timing-wise so badly. One of the Oklahoma State offensive linemen got down the field before the ball was in the air. Ineligible receiver downfield. And that's more than understandable because there was nothing there. Oklahoma took away the screen initially, and the timing was off to the point where linemen leaked downfield prematurely. Single season mark for Josh Fields. He threw only 69 passes last year, but a couple of big ones against the Sooners. And that season ending victory and another penalty coming up against the offense. So a sputtering start to say the least. Part of the snap, false start on the offense, five yard penalty, repeat first down. Well, now it's going to be first and 20, and line you see at the 46, the first down line, sponsored this afternoon by Capital One. So the last thing Les Miles wanted after great field position from the zone 36, two five-yard markoffs. Usually when you're in a rivalry situation like this is, early edge goes to the defense because the adrenaline is flowing so freely. A little bit nervous offensively and big plays defensively. Tighter formation in front of Tatum Bell. Adjusting, but doesn't get much. Cracks it across the 28 to the 29. Wrapped up by Lance Mitchell, the middle linebacker. Playing at a very high level is Lance Mitchell, Mitchell, as is Tatum Bell. Almost six yards per carry himself. And he's gained 12 pounds since last year. He's breaking more tackles as a result of it. And his endurance is a lot better. When they get into the fourth quarter of games, he's playing through being tired a lot more efficiently than he had in the past. 1,600 yards in the last two seasons. And now second and 16 after the gain of four. Fields after the play fake, wide open. Has his man near the 45. Nice break by Rashawn Woods, who else? The junior from Oklahoma City in front of Andre Wolford and close to a first down. That's the matchup that Oklahoma State wants to get is Woods on Wolfolk and not on straight. Let's take a look at Teddy Lehman dropping back into his lane, trying to read the receivers coming on the potential crossing pattern. Ball goes out down the football field to the outer quadrant where Woods has run one of his precise routes as he normally does and gets separation out of the break on Wolfolk and made a great catch. It looks like they're doubling up on the outside. Quick toss, Tatum Bell of the boundary. First down, Oklahoma State. Nifty move, good call. Gets about six or seven. Brandon Everidge forced him out. So the wide side of the field, Tatum Bell, little guy, shows his quickness. Well, when you're a great wide receiver like Rashawn Woods is, watch him work down the football field and block for his, his running back, Tatum Bell. That's a pretty nice job right there, securing a little bit of an edge for Tatum Bell to take advantage of. Teddy Lane with the great speed, the inside-out pursuit from the safety. Everidge is phenomenal, but Woods did a nice job of stealing the cornerback. From the 49, first down Cowboys. Woods, the only wide receiver coming out of the backfield. A movement up front, three down. Tatum Bell gets maybe two to the 49, but it looked like Dusty Dvorak, the sophomore from Lake Dallas, Texas, jumped. So it'll be first and five. Got to watch the football. Don't listen to the quarterback. When the ball moves, Outside, you move. On the defense, five yard penalty. The big first down. So the Cowboys get a free five. 
Don't forget, tomorrow night, ACC Sunday Night Hoops returns to Fox Sports Net as the Temple Owls with head coach John Aidey. John Chaney, the Atlantic 10, matching up with the ACC. And the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest at home. Our first Sunday Night Hoops, ACC basketball, tomorrow night at 6 o'clock Eastern. Cowboys come in, winners in four of their last five, the best finish to a season since 1988. Great field position in the first possession. Bell weaving his way for three. Bastion Johnson, the strong side linebacker, the junior from Hayward, California, got to him. But it's going to bring up second and short, second and a couple. Les Miles decides on a first and five to put two tight ends in the football game and run right at Oklahoma. Thing with Oklahoma, they're so fast defensively, running east and west is a problem. They run you down, get after them, go north and south, run right at them, try to anchor them and stabilize them. Oklahoma giving up only 287 yards a game, Dave. That is ninth best in the nation in total defense. Now on second and a couple, nice move. Patience, Bell waited for it, he gets it. He's got a first down to the Sooners 38. Waited for the kick out and got it. Yeah, he was very patient, and, and what this does, Oklahoma State wants to get that running game established. Last year, they could not run the football at all. And this year, they're running it much more effectively. Last year, for only the second time since 1940, they averaged less than 100 yards on the ground. They averaged 94 yards a game. This year, they're up over 140, much improved because of Tatum Bell's contributions. He's the single with two to each side. No tight end in the formation. Quick one. Woods gets the block to the 35. And a nice block by another wide receiver downfield for him. John Lewis applied that little chip on the outside. You know, whenever you have a play go to the perimeter, you have to have good blocking. Watch Lewis right here, just as you described. Gets out by outside position on Wolf. Look, it sustains contact, getting the edge established. When you pick up five, six, seven, eight yards on first down, becomes a much easier game to call. Second and medium, second and short, everybody, everything's available to you game plan wise. Multiple shifts now as they were strong to the short side. Works the other way. After the shift, Seymour Shaw in the backfield. And counter play for Shaw. Bolting into the secondary to the 20. Will he go down to the one yard line? Dropped the ball. And he fumbled it into the end zone. Touchdown Oklahoma State. John Lewis covers it after the Shaw fumble. Let's take a look at what goes on here. Look at Oklahoma with the shifting. Look at Oklahoma's defense. How do I adjust? How do I adjust? They get the strength of the formation the other way. Now they run the counter back. These guys throw the great blocks. They pull the backside, kick out, seal block, miss tackle by Brandon Everidge into the end zone for a touchdown after the fumble. Luke Phillips, the junior from Tulsa for the point after. And a perfect beginning for Oklahoma State. And look, as, as the play concludes, that's Johnny on the spot right there. I mean, being in the right place at the right time is John Lewis as the ball is stripped. And Lewis finishes for six. So a 64-yard drive for Oklahoma State, and they're leading the number three team of the nation early. The ultimate, if you're an Oklahoma State Cowboy fan, They've got a 7-0 lead after beating the Sooners last year. Now, don't forget the Sooners weren't a dominating team on the road this year like they have been at home. They won last week 60-15 against Tech. But they've had some close win days. We did that game at Mizzou when they barely beat the Tigers 31-24. And you saw how strong this wind is here today, Joel. It blew the football right off the tee, gusting up to 25 miles an hour at stages today. The wind's a huge factor. It's in Oklahoma State's back right now. Varden kicks it away, a very high one. It's going to be Perkins from the five. Sets it up right, slowed down, and Barry, shy of the 15, only to the 14. Are the Cowboys a little juiced up in their orange? Well, they sure are. A little carryover from last year. Look at, look at the formation change. All the shifting that has to go on by Oklahoma. Now here comes the pulling guard and Denard, the fullback. Guard gets his block, Denard slips, but Tatum Bell splits or splits him. Brandon Everidge misses in the open field. Now the ball is stripped by straight, but nice hustle. I'll tell you what, that's just a great play by John Lewis to follow the play all the way into the end zone to make the recovery on Seymour Shaw's run. 
Jones in the backfield. Well, we saw a good play by Lewis earlier on the block outside. Here is John Woods. He's battling his way. Jones, the redshirt freshman from Jenks. Good yardage across the 15 out to the 18. You know, this uh, Oklahoma State football team beat Oklahoma in Norman last year. And, and they really, what they wanted to take out of that football game was remember how they took the field and played the necessary intensity to compete in a game like that. That's what Les Miles wanted his team to learn. And it carried over. This year they had big wins against Texas A&M and Nebraska. And now they're competing well again today. They learned something from that contest last year in Norman. Griffin and Works flanking Hibble in the backfield. The quick one. Nothing to work. Mark Clayton for the target. Darren Williams, his counter also wearing number nine. Taking care of it right away. No gain, basically. A yard at the most. That's been the most significant thing in my eye early in this football game. Oklahoma, yards after catch, nothing. Oklahoma State, it seems like they're in the huddle. The route recognition is phenomenal. There's a defender there immediately after every catch of the football, and the journey ends right then. So now, momentum-wise, early in the game, a big one, especially as far as field position is concerned, a third and five. Brent, Quentin Griffin, the only one in the backfield, with Nate Hibble. Blitz coming from the outside, and that is short of the first down, going to the tight end, Trent Smith. And Lance Donnelly instead. And Donnelly slipped. Donnelly went to the turf after the catch. His feet went right out from under him. And a little bit of a bunch formation. And Donnelly and Smith both in the football game. And Donnelly, as he comes back to catch the football, his feet go out from under him. He goes right down at the 21-yard line. Gabe Lindsay waiting for the punt from Blake Ferguson. And Ferguson hitting it into the wind. Hangs up a good one. No fair catch call for it. Lindsey dropped right at the 40-yard line. Good play downfield on the coverage for the Sooners. It was Will Peoples along with Antonio Perkins. But great field position again. Second consecutive time. Cowboys by seven. We'll have it in the road 40. The Cowboys are doing a number on the Sooners early. Interested party down the sideline right now with Eric Clemens. Eric? All right, Joel. Thank you. I've got Barry Switzer. He's won his share of Bedlam games. He's won a national championship or two and a Super Bowl as well. Talk about it early. Oklahoma, two possessions, and has done really nothing offensively. What's the, what's the deal here? Well, they got to have some success throwing down the field. They've thrown a lot of flare routes. That doesn't mean anything yet. If Oklahoma State can run the football, they got a chance to win the football game like any team does. Now talk about a heated rivalry like this, Coach, as we watch the uh, first down play of State. The heated rivalry like this where emotions run real high, and it looks like these teams have the same record coming in here, but Oklahoma's a big favorite. Well, Oklahoma has a better record coming in here, but Oklahoma is the favorite. But Oklahoma, this is the emotional edge goes to Oklahoma State. There's no question about it. Uh, this is a big game playing here. They're ready to play. They want to prove something. This is another game for Oklahoma, and they can win it on form, but they got to be able to execute throw the ball down the field. All right, Coach, enjoy it. Bring them some luck, maybe. Thank you. Coach Barry Switzer, of course, he's won his share of these Bedlam matchups. And guys, let's send it back up to you for what continues to be a very interesting first quarter. And Dave, the Sooners don't usually beat themselves in the right. four years under Bob Stoops, but there is a big mental mistake early. Yeah, frustration penalty right there. 15-yard penalty, personal foul on sportsmanlike conduct on Oklahoma. And I think they feel that, uh, you know, Oklahoma State's got control of this football game early, trying to do anything they can to recapture control, but you have to do it within the framework of the rules. Josh Fields with Bell split in the backfield along with Denard. Beautiful play fake. Buying time. Going for the bundle. Woods is there. Touchdown, Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State got the matchup they wanted once again. Woods on Andre Wolfolk. Little play action pass. Once you're able to establish the running game, that play fake, the fake of the run, freezes those linebackers and members of the secondary. And over the top went Rashawn Woods. The big play. Luke Phillips happy to be out there again that quickly for a point after. Hard to believe. What a play fake, though, by Josh Fields. 
He froze the secondary. It was that good deception-wise. Yeah, he did a nice job of hiding the football, and he couldn't believe it. He could have gone to either Woods, or he could have gone to John Lewis. Both his wideouts were open down the football field. The play action fake was that good. Ball is blown off the tee for Cole Farden, and no, it's not Bill Murray, and it's not Groundhog Day. We're not looking for Pucks and Tony Phil, but Farden's <laughs> kicking away again. To Antoine Savage and Antonio Perkins and Les Miles, is he a little relaxed on the sideline, feeling well, pretty good about his chances already? I'll tell you what, Les Miles and Mike Gundy, the offensive coordinator for Oklahoma State, are doing so well, is mixing personnel and formations. They have Oklahoma on their heels defensively. Perkins again, pin him to the boundary, and they do. He tries to angle right, finds a lane, but it's hit again. Right at the 17, Daniel McLemore, the defensive back, with a beautiful play. Guy that can really run. Runs at 10, 400 meters in college. Take a look at the touchdown. Watch the play fake. Everett steps up. He gets fooled. Either one of the wide receivers are open. Watch Everett step up. Now trouble. He's out of position. Lewis is going to be open. But the guy he gets the ball to is Rashawn Woods. He's so wide open. No safety in the middle of the football field. Easy pickings touchdown set up because of the excellence of the running game. Oklahoma really respected that run fake and throws everybody. Out of the gun, Quentin Griffin wrapped up early. He slides across the 20 to the 21 in the arms of Llewellyn Brown, the senior from White House, Texas. It'll bring up second and six. So we've got about six minutes left of the first 15 minutes of play. Accurate scoring drive. Took a long time, didn't it? Yeah. 60 yards, 32 seconds. You know what's real interesting about the start of this game, Dave? Last week, Oklahoma's average start, field position-wise, to start a drive against Texas Tech was their own 47. This is the third time they've had it. They've had it at the 20, the 14, and this time the 17. And Texas Tech started at the 23. They run the option with Hibble. And Hibble tripped up, crossing the 23, up to the 24. Massey, the safety gets to him. You're right. They had 24 yards average drive start per possession. You figure there was at least 10 possessions in that game. That's 240 yards of hidden offense, hidden yards. And, and, you know, it's easy to understand why the score got out of hand to the extent that it did, but it's just reversed today. Oklahoma State, the beneficiary of short field. Oklahoma having to go the long run. Oklahoma looking for the first first down of the contest on their third possession. Out of the gun. The dump off, and they finally get one. Quentin Griffin accomplishes it across the 30 to the 31, bumped out there by Darren Williams. I'll get your head started on the NFL weekend later tonight on Fox Sports. And it all starts at 10 o'clock Eastern. The NFL show presented by the U.S. Postal Service. That's tonight actually at 10.30 Eastern. And tomorrow at 10 a.m. Tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Eastern. So Michael Irvin alongside with Tony Saragusa, Tommy Davidson will try to reel him in. The NFL show later tonight on Fox Sports Net. So first and 10, Oklahoma playing catch up in a big way on the road where they've had some very close games. Lost on the road. Their only loss of the year came on the road at AM. Hibble in trouble. And a diving grab, but out of bounds as it's taken in on the near side. Making the grab was Will Peoples. Tried to get a foot down, the sophomore from Humble, Texas. The pressure had a lot to do with the Aaron throw. Yeah, and Darren Williams is doing an excellent job on the field side of coverage. He's the field side. He's got the wide side of the football field because he's a better cover guy. And they have the young uh, freshman, Vernon Grant, playing the boundary side, the short side of the field, less area to, to roam. I'll tell you what, the guy that is really stepping up is Darnett, Darnett Williams doing a great, Darren Williams doing a great job in coverage early in this game. Second and 10, hit it again out of the gun, sliding his tight end. Counter for Griffin, slowed down to the backfield. Play busted up completely. Now, what a job getting to him in the backfield. Kevin Williams slowed him down. He had the penetration. Richmond, Duran making the stop. Kevin Williams was the disruptor, dis disruptor on this play. First team, all Big 12, defensive lineman. Watch him come off the football and, and get into the backfield. The penetration's extreme. When you have to make your first cut in your own backfield, I don't care how good a back you are, and Quentin Griffin's a good one, when you have to make your first cut three or four yards from your own backfield, you're going to make a great run, just get back to the line of scrimmage. Still third and ten. They just got their first first down on a third and three. Flood the left side with three wide receivers. 
Pibble with great pocket protection, wide open. He's got Peoples, he's got a first down inside the 45-yard line of the 42. Albert Craig dropping him in the secondary. He had a few options to look at with that much time in the backfield. Yeah, and what he did, he created some of his own time, Joel. Watch, watch on the edge, Antonio Smith. He comes on the stunt. Hibble just slide steps away from him, and the pocket was secure otherwise. Once he slid step away from Antonio Smith, he's got plenty of time to get his eyes refocused down the football field. A little tackle and twist. Smith comes clean. Hibble sidesteps. Resets his feet, great throwing motion, completion. Kewan Jones, a little counter play up the middle. Lugging his way inside the 40, down to the 38. Gain of four for Jones. Big drive here for Oklahoma, down two touchdowns. And have to answer. Let's not forget, this is a senior quarterback, and he's got coming into the game an 18 and 2 record as a starter. And, and really, they're so balanced offensively, Joe, it's not like they can throw the they can't throw the football. Sometimes their passing game sets up the run. Sometimes the running game sets up the pass. This early in the football game, you're not going to see game plans flying out of the coaching booth. They're not going to give up their game plan yet. Plenty of time. They've got to run the football. That is going to be a key all day for Oklahoma. Jones, little crease, not much available. Maybe two down to the 36. It'll bring up a third and long, third and about four. Duran wrapped him up, the outside backer. The one thing that Oklahoma has done so much better this year is been able to run the football. Kevin Wilson, a big contributor to that. The Oklahoma, Bob Stoops hired him away from Northwestern, where they ran the ball out of the shotgun very effectively. And his offensive line's coming off the ball with a lot more attitude and intensity, and they're running the ball because they want to, you know, not because defenses are letting them, but now they're behind by 14 points. They're still going to have to mix it up. And they convert on a third down again. They hit on 45% during the regular season. Hibble, quick pop. It's complete. First down, taking it in Curtis Fagan. As a gang tackle him around the 26-yard line. That's that's the key. Great call there, Joel. Do you see how many guys there are around the football? Six or seven. Well, coming into the game, Oklahoma's already wrapped up the Big 12 South Division regular season title. Next week in Houston, they're going to be the North champions. Winners yesterday over Nebraska, well, the Buffaloes of Colorado. But Oklahoma State is already bowl eligible. Right. Now they can really increase, enhance their position for a better bowl. No question. And, and boy, they really hate that. Uh, look back on that Louisiana Tech loss early. Griffin weaving his way. Nifty moves. They finally get to him, but there's not a lot to get to. We talked about it. Quentin Griffin's only 5'7", 190. Tough, fast, and as Bill Clay, the defensive coordinator for Oklahoma State, told us he is strong and as tough as a mule. He is. He's got tremendous balance. The run last week against Texas Tech when he put his left hand down to balance himself and, and righted himself a long touchdown run. He has just got everything you want in the back. Low center of gravity, no hitting surface, and strength and speed. Make you miss. Now second, call it five. Pibble, play fake, didn't fool anybody, but he breaks tackles. Boy, that's the upper body strength of Pibble at 6'4", 225. Did they get the cage yeah. on the way by with it a face mask with the flag down in the play? Is it the big one? Is it 15 yards? By the way, later today, we're going to be joined by the North Division head coach, cha the champion of the North Division. Gary Barnett is going to be with us. Face mask against the defense. Five yard penalty results in a first down. So Gary Barnett is going to join us in the third quarter. Now we'll look ahead to the game next week at Reliance Stadium in Houston. Today, though, we're at Lewis Field in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Magnificent afternoon. A blustery day, though. Game time temperature right around 50 degrees, but wind chill probably a little bit nippier than that, Dave. Right around 40. Jones, Runnels in the eye on a first down all the way to the 15. Drive started deep in Oklahoma territory. The fade, corner of the end zone, jump ball, and it's knocked away. Great play, taking it away from Brandon Jones. It was Darren Williams. Is that a, that's not a flag in the end zone, is it? Yeah, I guess it must be. They're talking about I saw something come out just, oh, just about two yards into the end zone, and it is. They call him pass interference. Uh, on, on the break. play, yeah, I thought that was uh, that was decent coverage, but pass interference was the call. When that orange end zone, it's tough to pick up that yellow flag, but it's sitting there. And let's take a look. 
Boy, there's a little bit. Of, it, it could go either way. Both guys have their head looking for the looking for the football. The left arm wrapped around. The left arm wrapped around the body is what the official called. And I'll tell you, I'm not sure it made a difference in the outcome of the play. But Darren Williams wraps that left arm around the body, and that left arm is what the official saw with that bear hug around the body and felt that it impeded his opportunity to catch. He never turned around to really locate the ball, though, did he? Well, in, in, in college football, you know, it's not as big a factor. That's that's not as big a, a problem with, the, with regard to the penalty call. Elon Jones, counter, give left, bangs up the middle. He's to the one. It'll be second and goal just outside of the one. Richmond finally gets to him. And a junior from Oklahoma City. And Robinson also in on the hit, the middle linebacker, senior from Tyler, Texas. And this is where Oklahoma really, really struggled last year was running the football when you're first and goal inside the five-yard line. And they feel like they, they can do it a lot better this year. And Griffin with that pad level low, but the challenge is met by Terrence Robinson. That was a good hit in the hole by a linebacker filling against a good, good running back. Second and goal. Jones diving. Is he there? I thought he got in. No call yet. They're going to say he's inches away, but back to what you were talking about, Dave. In 12 games last year, the Sooners had 20 rushing touchdowns. In 11 games this year, they've already got 29. Yeah, and, and I guess they felt that uh, that time Griffin bounced into the end zone. He hit, hit just short of the end zone and, and bounced in. Quarter ends at the six-inch line. And a shocker early, but the Sooners about to get on the board when we come back, barring a turnover. 14 to nothing at the end of the first 15 minutes of play. Stillwater, Oklahoma. Water's got to be chilly, but nobody's complaining. Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. From Lewis Field, Joel Myers, Dave Lapman, Eric Clemens down on the sideline. Had a 14 to nothing lead, believe it or not, but Oklahoma's starting to put it together. They started this drive back at their own 17-yard line. Now they've got third and goal just inches away, and we were just talking about the way they have been able to get the ball in the end zone this year on the ground. They have not had to be the deceptive team over the last couple of years like they were in play fakes and throwing the ball. So let's see if they can hammer it home. It'll be Jones coming from the sideline along with J.D. Runnels. This is their, their power formation right here. Much more physical. Jones airborne he's in. Touchdown Sooners. That's his 14th touchdown rushing of the season. He is their short yardage goal line guy. Nice body lean, easy touchdown. Nice, nice blocking up front. Let's also remind everybody, Oklahoma State got up to a 10 to nothing lead early in the season against UCLA, and UCLA came back with 31 unanswered points on the same field. And in the opener, the game that uh, Oklahoma State probably looks back on and shakes their head, they had a 17-point lead on Louisiana Tech in the third quarter and lost the game by a point. Trey to Carlo. With the extra point, and he pushed it. Yep. He pushed it. He'd already missed two this year. He's missed a third now. That hurts. After that kind of drive, 83 yards. The fail of the conversion. But the Sooners are on the board. And it's an eight-point deficit for Oklahoma. Welcome back to Stillwater. As DiCarlo just missed the extra point. Dan Cody is going to kick it away. And now Oklahoma State on a very short kick. Coming up to take it. It's going to be Ooh. Chris Matthews buried. And Bryant instead, TD Bryant. Dennison did a number on him. Short of the 30, the 29-yard line. A big, uh, big key play in the touchdown drive by Oklahoma was the interference call on Darren Williams. He had that left arm wrapped around, and, and then the touchdown by the touchdown maker on short yardage and goal line. Juan Jones is the key. Snap a little bit inside. 
DiCarlo got to the ball a little bit sooner. The timing was a little disrupted because Rice's snap was a little bit inside the McCoy. Now Tatum Bell into the secondary. He's got a first down. Well, they're going to put him maybe short by about a foot. He landed on the 40. They're going to put him shy of the 39 in the arms of Brandon Everidge. He's really, really improved his toughness at the running back position. He keeps a nice low pad level now. Much stronger with that 12-point gain, 12-pound uh, gain. He's much more durable. Well, Miami dominating Syracuse up at the Carrier Dome, 35 to 7. So it doesn't look like Oklahoma, even if they win today, doesn't look like they're going to get any help from Syracuse. It'll have to come from Virginia Tech. Yeah, their primary concern right now is the Cowboys in those orange jerseys. They're playing well. Josh Fields on second and inches, toss sweep. Bell tripped up, but still getting the first down to the 40. Derek Strait got him low. I think Oklahoma State's offensive line is doing a nice job at the line of scrimmage. That Oklahoma defense is very, very fast, and the best way to anchor him is to run right at him. And the boys up front coming off the ball pretty well. And you've got serious experience on the outside, those two tackles. Russell, the senior, and Kyle Eaton, the senior. And Kyle Eaton, big number 65 right there, the big left tackle. 6'8", 300 pounds, one of six Division I-A athletes to get a college football national scholar athlete award. 10,000 bucks for his postgraduate work. On the play fake, Fields wanted to go deep. And he's got his man open again wow. at the 20-yard line. Rashawn Woods, touchdown Oklahoma State. Unbelievable. The second time this season, Bob Stoops can't believe his eyes. Texas A&M was raining touchdown passes on his Sooners. Four touchdown passes in that game, two touchdown passes already early in this one. Rashawn Woods over the top from long distance twice. Walker for the point after. It's good. So now, all of a sudden, three early scores, two 60-yarders to Woods. Play fake worked again, yep. and the Cowboys are dominating early in the second quarter. Rashawn Woods has just established a new Cowboy single-season mark with his 15th touchdown reception. This young man has put together phenomenal numbers all year long. He, I have a, he came in today with nine straight games, Dave, of seven or more catches. I, I have a question. How can he not be a Blitnikoff finalist? He's in the top four in the nation in good catches question. per game, top five yards per game. How is he not a finalist? Very good question. Barton keeps it on the ground. And it's going to be brought back by Antoine Savage. Across the 25, belted, going down near the 27. So we talked about Rashawn Woods' ability to run routes. Watch him on Wolfhook, the matchup they want. Watch the little move. Wolfhook's got inside position no more. He fakes running the out and then cuts it back to the inside. A little double move. Watch Wolfhook. Whoop! Turns him around. And no help from the inside. Massey's nowhere to be found as the safety. And Wolfhook had inside technique. So, I mean, both guys didn't play it real well, but the guy that really suffered the most was the matchup of Wolfolk trying to stay with Rashawn Woods. Great route, little double move, precise route. Hibble with Griffin in the backfield. Slide Smith to tight end. And come back the other way with Griffin. He just powers his way across the 30 up to the 33. Get him by six on first down. Eric Clemens, what's the latest? Well, we talk about Rashawn Woods, guys, and earlier this season, some coaches, opponents, and things wondered whether Rashawn was physical enough to come up big time. Well, he responded in that game we had earlier here on Fox Sports Net against UCLA with a yes. He was dominant last season against Oklahoma. He's been dominant throughout the last two years. He set single season records, as you talked about, 86 catches and 1,305 yards coming in. I think he's the real deal, guys. <laughs> He's got, he's got the size, doesn't he? It's Griffin. Man, boy, was that a slow developing play? 
Coming in from the outside, Paul Duran. What a start the outside linebackers had. He's only a redshirt freshman from Dell City, Oklahoma. And it's a loss of about a half a yard. It's going to be third and four, almost five. And, and it's contagious. I mean, you can, the absolute atmosphere is, is electric here. Oklahoma State, all phases of it are just all jacked up. The adrenaline is pumping, and Oklahoma's stunned. I mean, you know, they, they just, right now, they're just puzzled. And, and Bob Stoops can't figure it out either. Can't, can't believe his football team's playing this way early on. You just don't do this to the center's defensive unit. And especially on the, in a quarter and a couple of minutes, they fire the slant. It's knocked away from the wide receiver, Will Peoples. Punched away by Durant Williams. He's playing a very solid football game. And the coverage has been outstanding. I mean, the route recognition is phenomenal. It's like they're in the huddle. And they're hearing the routes are going to be run. The coverage is so tight. When even if catches are made by Oklahoma, Oklahoma State is tackling immediately. No yards after catch. Gabe Lindsay waiting for the punt. Once again from Blake Ferguson. So the third time the Sooners have gone three and out with a punt. They get into the end zone with that 83-yard drive on their other possession. And Lindsay puts it on the ground, gets it back with flags on the play. Still isn't down across the 30 to the 35. There's going to be a halo violation, I believe, yeah. against Oklahoma. And I think a couple of them were being blocked. I, I, those are the tough ones. You said it. When you're being blocked into the halo violation instead of running into it under your own volition. And they're going to call it an illegal block instead. That block into the halo was pushed in the back. Well, tomorrow, don't forget the pregame show, Fox's NFL Sunday. The conversation continues. I've heard you say a couple times that you fired me. If you did fire me, I didn't think we did. I thought we kind of settled on this thing. But if you did fire me, you still owe me three years on that contract. Well, I thought we made a, as I recall, <laughs> we made a cash settlement. And settlement. The, lo the logic, the logic <laughs> was behind that. I, I didn't that. know that was fired, though. I thought that, hey, you and I both agreed that it wasn't going to work. A question of semantics, Clash of the Titans. Right after that conversation, great NFL doubleheader, Rams, Eagles. Second half to most of the nation, as well as the Seahawks and 49ers. Tomorrow, Fox's NFL Sunday. Tatum Bell altering his course across the 16 to the 17. Again, about a yard for the little guy. He's not exactly towering over Quentin Griffin either at 5'11", 210. Well, it, I think a key to this football game has been Bell, established that running game, as well as Seymour Shaw. But Seymour Shaw, Shaw broke that counter play for a touchdown. Even though he fumbled it, it was recovered in the end zone by John Lewis. Breaking those big runs, Oklahoma has bit on play fake after play fake. Fake that run over the top, and the beneficiary has been the great Rashawn Woods for two big touchdowns. It'll be Bell bouncing to the boundary. Teddy Lehman, big time play. He's a Buckus Award finalist in the open field, saves the first down, gets him at the 21. It'll bring up third to about six. Teddy Lehman is a defensive stat stuffer. You know, he does everything well. He forces fumbles, recovers fumbles, and, and makes a bunch of tackles. And the reason is because of his speed. You know, he ran a 10-4, 10, 10 500 meters in, in high school. He was, a, he was a sprint guy on his high school's track team. He still runs like 4-4-5 four, four, in the 40 at 235 pounds. That's big time. So now on third and six, Cowboys four of seven so far in their third down tries. The quickie oh. is dropped. They had it in the hands of T.D. Bryant. He couldn't hang on. He would have had the first down. He tried to run it to him before he had it. Absolutely. Did not have total secure, uh, the football totally secured. Brandon Shelby thought he might be in position to make a play, but it looked like Oklahoma State had a blocker on him. So I, I agree with you, Joe. I think it would have gone for first down the other. Well, the Cowboys had been three for three. Three possessions and three touchdowns. But now a three and out with a punt. Antonio Perkins waiting for the punt from Cole Farden. Farden with a 42-yard average. There you go. There you go. Go get and he sends out a beauty. Good hang time. And what an open field tackle. Down early for Oklahoma State. It was Vernon Grant again, the defensive back. Well, they'll have it at the 36-yard line. Well, we go back to some of the great games this year on Fox Sportsnet. Dan, we were there. Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. The Eddie Robinson Classic, Iowa State, Florida State. 
Chris Ricks, a couple of first half touchdowns. 24 0 lead for the Seminoles, but Seneca Wallace bringing the Iowa State Cyclones back. Now, what about this? With time running down, four seconds left. I thought he was in. They yep. said he was out. Yep. Now the option. And he's stuffed. 38 31. The Seminoles preserve the win. The champions of the ACC this year, which is, as we know, a great football conference. 10 16 left in the half. And unfortunately, there is a cowboy down. And that is Jed, Jed Newkirk, Newkirk yeah. the deep snapper. So that could be interesting down the road. You don't usually have guys on the depth chart beyond one deep snapper. Right. You might have one guy that helps out occasionally, but he doesn't take the reps. That could impact special teams. And, and when you look at uh, particularly against Oklahoma, they have 13 block kicks right. in the Bob Stoops era. So with that, knowing that the deep snapper is nicked up, he may be coming after it the next opportunity. Best field position to start a drive yet today for Oklahoma, their own 36. Pibble, he wants the deep ball of his own. He's got a man who's being held up. Yeah. Is there a flag, Will Peoples? Boy, that arm was out there, wasn't it? Yeah, Williams Darryl was Williams. tugging. He was tugging. He had that left or right arm out there and just pulling at one of the arms, but uh, the side, official on the sideline couldn't see it, and the official in the middle of the football field never made the call either. Well, right after the first of the year, this January, Fox Sportsnet introduces 54321, the only show that takes you inside the world of extreme sports each and every night. Breaking news, highlights, insider features, 54321, the world of extreme sports, all in one place. That starts in January, weeknights, on Fox Sportsnet. I live for those sports. You know that, Dave. There you go. Second and 10 from the 37, Quentin Griffin stopped up the middle. Gain of about three, three and a half. Terrence Robinson, the middle linebacker, didn't buy it. He stayed at home. Every one of the second level players defensively, linebackers and safeties are, are keying on cue. And when you run those shotgun type running plays, it's very, very tough to make the reach because you have to make them on the run. And you don't see, in high school, you don't see a lot of shotgun running games as effective as what Oklahoma does. So it's hard for Oklahoma State second level players, these guys, to make those keys on the move. But they're doing a great job of it today. They have limited the space for Quentin Griffin big time. It'll be a timeout. Oklahoma State, 190 yards of offense compared to only 88 for Oklahoma. And Oklahoma's got 10 more offensive snaps. We'll find out what the Sooners do on third down when we come back. The Oklahoma Sooners have absolutely owned this series, but so far the Cowboys own this game. And welcome back to Stillwater, 935 left in the first half. Injury on the sideline, Eric. What's the latest on the deep snapper? Well, Jed Newkirk was running on the Oklahoma State sideline trying to run off that left knee injury, and he let out a big yell and told all the trainers, it just gave out on me again. They're working on him right now on the near side, and he looks like he might not be back in the game, just judging from the looks of things as I stand next to him here, guys. All right, Eric. Third and seven underneath toss. Nothing doing. It wasn't going to work anyway for Ronaldo Works. Incomplete. So... The Cowboys hold again. Yeah, and, and really what they've done, Oklahoma's third down conversion, 45% coming into today's game. Last year was only 37%. The difference, success on first and second down, a lot of third and medium, third and short. Today, Oklahoma State has gotten Oklahoma into a lot of third and longs, and they're not converting on third down like they have all season long. Blake Ferguson getting way too many opportunities as far as the Sooner fans are concerned. Gabe Lindsay. Waiting back to 25 of the Cowboys. So 21 already on the board. And they almost get to the putter. No fair catch. Lindsey didn't have enough room. Yep. He's brought down immediately by the wide receiver, Will Peoples. I hate that word. I really do. How do you really feel about it, though? I mean, Peoples, he, he's, he stops and gives him plenty of opportunity to catch the football. Instead of two yards, it's a yard and a half, and he gets penalized. Two-yard belt was violated. Ten-yard penalty to spot a foul. It'll be a five-yard markoff. So for the Cowboys, three for three when it came to scoring to start the day. First quarter, how about the fumble at the end of this one, Dave? Lewis recovers after the Shaw fumble. And then after the play fake, Rashawn Woods giving the Cowboys a 14-0 lead. But the Sooners came back with an 83-yard drive of their own. 
touchdown run by Kewan Jones. Didn't take long, though, for another 60-yard pass. There is Sean Woods. 21 to 6, Oklahoma State. And let's remind everybody, Dave, Oklahoma's fourth best in scoring defense. They only give up 14 points a game. Exactly. Fields has his man all tangled up. He was trying to get it to Billy Badgett at the tight end. Working against Derek Strait and fighting downfield. Well, that's not a matchup that's favorable to the Cowboys. You have your tight end on your best cover guy. Derek Strait's the best cover guy for, for Oklahoma. Although you have a size mis mismatch to Badgema, which is which is dramatic, but he had no separation whatsoever. Badgema 6'5", 250, running down the football field against a defensive back 5'11", 194 pounds. How about the average per completion for Josh Fields? 122 oh. yards, four completions. I, th I thought his completion average was big against Baylor last week, 24 yards uh, per per completion. I mean, it's bigger today. Fields after another play fake. Oh, Deep wow. down the middle. Unbelievable. It is the tight end. Will it go the distance? Badjuma fighting down to the 10-yard line. Bassey saves the touchdown. Well, the middle of the field working quite nicely. Yep. Everidge uh, missed the tackle. And what they caught Oklahoma in that time was cover two. And the safeties working their way out. Watch the safeties working their way out to help against the wide receivers. Vacate in the middle of the field. That's where you bring the big tight end in there. And against cover two, Badgerman gets down the middle of the football field well. Everett misses the tackle. Wolfolk has to make the play. They just found the big tight end right down the chute against cover two. Big, big play. Have you ever thought about abstract art? Nobody home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's just outside of the 11. It'll be first and 10, and Fields is going to call a timeout. The first of the half for Oklahoma State. It is hard to believe, folks, what's developing. 8.43 left in the second quarter. And Oklahoma just is not victimized like this, especially in their secondary. And this goes back to even when, you know, let's face it, they're missing Roy Williams, who's not playing on Sundays with the Dallas Cowboys. Roy Williams made some big plays out of their secondary, but for the most part, he's the only one who departed. Well, you look at what they, uh, what Texas A&M did to Oklahoma down there. McNeil completed eight passes, four of them were touchdowns, and four of them were, were big touchdown passes over the top. Oklahoma State said, look, you know, if, if we can get our running game established, we're going to be able to, and Mike Stoops lighten them up, and Brent Venables lighten them up as well, saying no more play action over the top. Well, Dave, we were there. Another great one earlier this year on Fox Sportsnet. Longhorns at Nebraska. Nebraska with so many wins at home. Roy Williams, the touchdown pass early from Chris Sims. Williams got 13, but Dewan Gross late in the fourth. 44-yard punt return, and now in the closing seconds, an opportunity for a tie or a win. How about an interception by Nathan Basher as Texas preserves a 27-24 victory. An emotional night for Mac Brown and the Longhorns. We have seen, I mean, every game it seems has gone down to the wire for us this year. Not this one right now, though. It's early. Pending the boundary, Tatum Bell was lucky to only lose a yard out of that play. Dan Cody chasing him down, the sophomore from Ada, Oklahoma. You see Oklahoma's team speed right there. Everybody on their feet, nobody get knocked to the ground. There was no cutback lane. They all pursued inside out and gang tackle. Great speed. Big guy at 6'5", 270 pounds. So the Cowboys dominating one of the best defensive units in the nation. Both teams coming off highs last week. The win for Oklahoma to Texas Tech. And the Cowboys scored 60 plus as well on Bantam. So plenty of momentum. It still belongs to the Cowboys, though. Fields with time, corner of the end zone. Touchdown, Rashawn Woods. What an amazing start to the day for Rashawn Woods. His third touchdown catch, his 16th of the season. And we're only midway through the second quarter. Yeah, this is a, a, a complete day for a lot of people, particularly against a team like Oklahoma. They got the matchup by formation. They want it again. Woods on Wolfhook and his precise route running ability fooled Wolfhook again. He bit inside. Woods took it outside. Luke Phillips, the point after. 
a day of perfection so far for the Oklahoma State Cowboys, dominating their arch rivals, the Sooners, by 22. Whatever you do, don't pinch them. Don't wake these people up. This is dreamland right now if you're an Oklahoma State Cowboy fan. 28-6 over the Sooners. This is about halfway through the second quarter. Perkins and Savage waiting for the kick. It'll be brought back by Savage across the 15 to the 20. Good return past the 25 as they get him near the 28. You know, where is Waldo? Where is yeah. Eric Clemens? He's right in the thick of the action. He's uh, he's all over that sideline doing a great job as he always does for us all day long. Let's take a look at the touchdown. Woods on Wolfhook again. And Woods freezes him to the inside, breaks to the outside, gets the separation with another great route. Wolfhook in chasing. There's our man Eric Clemens. He likes what he saw. He said, yeah, that's a nice route. And, and the ball's deposited right at Eric Clemens' feet by the great Rashawn Woods. <laughs> Yeah, here I am. I tell you what, he has not been challenged off the line of scrimmage all game long, so they're not making him be very physical, and he's making the OU defense pay for it, guys. All right, Eric. Well, stay right there. You never know. They could be back in a hurry to see you. What about the other way? Quentin Griffin down the middle. Past the 40, up to the 44. So just when you think maybe Oklahoma's got to deviate and get away from the ground game, they're not panicking. It's still early. Yeah, with a guy like Quentin Griffin, they can get yards and 20-yard uh, plays and 20-yard chunks in their ground game just as easily as they can in the air. And you run that little delayed draw when Oklahoma State's thinking pass and the defensive lineman teeing off up the football field creates natural running lanes for Q. 260 yards, uh, total offense, and only 19 snaps for Oklahoma State. Unreal. It's hard to believe. Pibble looking for the home run ball with people. Man, it's too tall and too far. And actually went for Mark Clayton going up against the defensive back, Vernon Grant. You know, the, the thing that, once again, Oklahoma State is doing a masterful job of, Les Miles and Mike Gundy playing with personnel, playing with formations, getting the favorable matchups. They're getting Rashawn Woods on Wolf of time and time and time again. Somebody's going to have to give Wolfhook some help. He can't handle Woods by himself. So now second and ten. They flood the left side with three wide receivers. Wide side of the field. Come back the other way. Griffin. Oh. Barry. What a read. Out of the secondary safety. Chris Massey. There's no halo rule there. As soon as he caught the football, he was in the grill. Massey was right in Quentin Griffin's face mask. He had the read, and he made the, the great recognition. Offensive lineman can't get there fast enough, and he just knocks him out, knocks him off his feet. Didn't knock him out, literally. Took him off his feet. It was a one-man screen. Offensive lineman could not get out in time to deliver the hit on Massey. So now third, and a loss of four, almost five. Got a third and 15. And we are going to get a timeout, I believe. Or will they reset the play clock? Yes, they'll reset the play clock for Hibble and the offense. You know, Oklahoma State saying, hey, last year was no fluke. You know, we outgained him 334 yards, 220. We had seven sacks. They had no yards rushing. It wasn't a fluke. They want to come out and prove that they were the real deal. And boy, in the first half today, Les Miles' troops, man, they look like one of the best teams in college football today. They're... Their yards per play offensively, Joel, just well, incredible. And Dave, you know, to recruit effectively, to go into living rooms, Les Miles can go in with back-to-back -back potentially, back-to-back -back wins over one of the best programs in the nation, the Sooners. And that was a good look at uh, offense coordinator Mike Gundy, and then Les Miles right here, liking what he sees. So now third and 15. 50% on third down tries. Moving the pocket by design. And Hibble trying to run for it. He won't come close. Dropped by Greg Richmond the end. Great pursuit by Richmond, the junior from Oklahoma City. And once again, Joel, third and long, third and 15. Oklahoma had not faced many of these third and long situations during the course of the season, converting 45% of the time on third down. It's tough to convert third and 15. Blake Ferguson continues to get his workout. Lindsey waits. 
The wobbler looking oh. up at the sun, puts it on the ground. Oklahoma surrounds it. Do they come up with it? I believe so. No. What a break for the Cowboys. Boy, that's the one thing you don't want to do is turn the football over and give Duran Oklahoma Williams. life. Duran Williams alertly pouncing on it. If you're not sure you can catch the football, stay away. Almost like an end over ender coming in. Gabe Lindsay, the ball goes right through his arms, and that's just a great hustle play by Williams. He's had a heck of a game covering receivers to the wide side of the field, and that time he did had his biggest play covering the football on the fumble. And, you know, both these football teams, a lot of starters play on the kick coverage teams. That's just the way they believe it's got to be. Put your best athletes out there to make plays in the kicking game. Now let's see with Seymour Shaw coming out. If the Cowboys try to establish a ground game. Well, more than five and a half minutes left in the first half. Counter for Shaw. Shaw pulls his way across the 23. They stand him up after a gain of five at the 25. Dan Cody gets to him again. The end on Veda, Oklahoma. A good yardage on first down. You see that yellow line. They need to get it across the 30-yard line, right at the 29-30. First down is sponsored by Capital One, who asks, what's in your wallet? Not much this time of year. It's the holidays. With the Christmas season rapidly approaching. Boy, those Christmas presents are killers. But you get your Capital One card, you get them financed easily, huh? They slide the tight end. And look for Badgham on the play. And fired for the other tight end. Tried to get it to Charlie Johnson. My favorite quarterback for the St. Louis Cardinals in the early 60s. He's a freshman from Sherman, Texas. He took a shot from Eric Bassey, didn't he? He sure did. But when you get five yards on first down, you know, it makes it still a third and makeable situation, third and five, even though you didn't complete the ball on second down. That's been a big, big difference. Oklahoma State much more productive on first down than Oklahoma has been. It's a big play now. Field position-wise, Oklahoma could get it back in solid shape. They still have plenty of time for a drive. Get on the board again, get in the end zone. Maybe get it to 14 before they go to the locker room. Here they come. Blitz off the outside, give up the middle. Shaw breaks the tackle, gets the first down to the 34. Well, the run blitz came from the wrong side. Yep, exactly. And Shaw had, Shaw hit the line of scrimmage with such acceleration that he ran away from that blitz. Seymour Shaw, just an arm tackle that he broke rather easily. Here comes the blitz off this side. Shaw's going to take it up the gut, and he hits the line of scrimmage so quickly that he runs away from the blitzer, and they can't arm tackle him around the ankles and generates the first down. Nice play. They're just shy of their own 35, leading by 22. Bell takes over for Shaw in the backfield. Moving the pocket. Beautiful play fake. Patchum is there. Why not? First down to the tight end. He's rumbling inside the 40, 35. You don't want to get in his way, do you? I'll tell you, the big fella can run a little bit at 250 pounds. <laughs> he showed some, didn't he? He did. He was moving him. And you know his quarterback put him in a position to succeed. Granted, it was a tiny throw, not many yards, but he took off. Yeah, and, and Badgerman releases clean. And, and Badgerman beat the cover two down the middle with a big play. And here on a naked bootleg, he presents himself as a nice target for Josh Fields. Yards after catch. Yards after catch today, all in Oklahoma State favor. I mean, after the catch, long touchdown runs after catch by Rashawn Woods. Badgema, yards after catch. Oklahoma, very, very few yards after catch. Big difference in this football game. First down for the Sooners, 32. Fields on the play fake. Once Woods in the end zone. Double coverage, pops it away. Woods with a defensive back on that play. Yeah, it, 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 that was greed there, the double coverage. That time, no, nowhere to, you know, he's got a lot of confidence in, in Rashad Woods to make the contested catch, but that time, double coverage. College football Saturday presented by Kia Sarah welcomes you once again to Lewis Field in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Joel Myers, Dave Lappin, Eric Clemens down to the sideline. State rivals, Oklahoma State and Oklahoma. Oklahoma has dominated the series, but Oklahoma State has made up ground in recent years, and especially with what they're doing today. 28 points on the board. Oklahoma ninth in the nation in total defense. They only give up 287 a game. 287 yards a game. They've already given up 308 in the first half. And we've still got time. End around. 
Nothing available, though, for Lewis. Or Gabe Lindsay, rather. So a loss back outside of the 35 to the 36. Now do they push themselves out of field goal territory. They've still got a third and long. And Joel, not only the yards, but mentioned earlier the points, only giving up a little over 14 points a game, fourth best in the nation. They've given up double that in the first half, 28 points. That's just, that is totally mind-boggling, the defensive breakdowns that have occurred on the play-action passes in this football game. You know what's really strange? They come off a game where they shut down. The first team all Big 12 quarterback, Cliff Kingsbury, last week. With that spread offense, Go throws figure. it all over the field. Now another play fake. Time. And it cuts for first down yardage. No. But field goal position on the grab by Rashawn Woods to the 25. So he gets it to the 26. It'll be about a 43-yard attempt if they want to go for it. And now uh, Luke Phillips last year converted a couple of big ones. Two 52-yard field goals he made in a three-point game. He was a, a hero, a factor in the game as well. Les Miles trying to decide, do I go for the field goal here or I do I, is this four-down territory to try to continue the drive? Well, the offense is still out there. He's got a timeout to spend if he wants to, and he's going to do that. He's going to let the clock wind down and then make a determination. Well, you talk about a guy that's going to be proud of his football team in this first half, Les Miles. He, I mean, his, this, his football team, their game plan has gone totally according to plan, no doubt about that. So the Cowboys use the timeout. 2.39 to play in the half. I would definitely go for the field goal. Sorry about that. It's fourth and a long fourth at almost five. And you talked about the 252 yarders he had last year. He's got a long of 46 yards. This would be about a 43 yard try. With the wind being a huge factor though. Oh, don't forget, join us tomorrow night. ACC Sunday Night Hoops back on Fox Sports Net. And the ACC's Wake Forest Demon Deacons welcoming in the Atlantic Tents Temple Owls. That is tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. ACC Hoops back on Fox Sports Net each and every Sunday night. I do agree that they, they are definitely in fields as range, but the, the higher you go, the bigger the wind becomes a factor. Down in the field, it's, it's a factor, but it swirls. It's a crosswind right now. It's, right. it's working slightly against him. It's a right-to-left wind. So I think that that's the, uh, the other factor that, that is being discussed. You know, with the wind, are we better off generating a first down? Do we kick the field goal? What do we do? They're going to set up. It'll be a 43-yard try. Phillips only 6 of 9 this year. Last year, he was 15 of 17, including the two 52-yarders. Now, a 43-yarder trying to put 31 on the board for Oklahoma State. Good placement, oh, and he blocked it. it. He got plenty yeah. of distance, but he pushed it over to the right side. So now, the Sooners get it back and desperately need points before they go to the locker room with 2.33 left in the second quarter. The other factor was, remember, Jed Newkirk, the deep snapper, is hurt. So now he's got a second deep snapper, but I thought the snap looked okay. He said it. Snap and hold was okay. The operation wasn't a problem. A wolf look has blocked two field goals this year. Look at look at the, he's got a 40 inch vertical, and he looked every bit of getting up there. And he, he's blocked a couple with that with that high jump. But I'll tell you what, jumping's not helping him cover Rashawn Woods. Rashawn Woods is turning him around on the ground. Before he get airborne that time, trying to block that field goal. He has gotten his hand on two this year. From the 26, Ben Hibble gets some points out of this final drive. Quentin Griffin belted crossing the line of scrimmage by Terrence Robinson, the middle linebacker. And he got three, almost four. Give him four to the 30. I wonder what that feels like to have a 40-inch vertical. I can get the uh, Sunday paper under my vertical, maybe. Let's slide it on the Tiptoe. Yeah. They will out of the gun on second and six. Fires the slant. It's complete. He's got a first down. Going to his wide receiver, Will Peoples. A sophomore from Humble, Texas, in front of Duran Williams. In that vaunted running game, much improved running game for the Oklahoma Sooners, less of a factor when you're down 22 points. So the clock moving inside the two-minute mark. In an overwhelming first half for the Cowboys. The dump off behind Griffin and chased down. Good play by the linebacker, Kirk Milligan. Yeah, he was put in a vulnerable position when he had to do a 360 to go back and get it. 
Yeah, that's the thing is Hibble has, has hit his receivers, sometimes throwing behind them. If you hit him in stride, you have a chance to make someone miss. If you put it behind them, no chance for yards after catch. And the percentage is fine for Hibble, but almost no yards. He's 11 of 16 for only 58 yards passing. Loss of a yard on that play, second and 11, and he floats it deep. Oh, yeah. Over is throwing. Curtis Fagan, the senior from Houston, by a yard or two. And he was blowing by Ricklin Holmes Miller. And that's Nate Hibble has a better feel for the intermediate and deep passing game. That's what he grew up doing in high school. And he throws a, a nice ball down the football field, an accurate deep ball. And as we've seen, a lot of the dump and swing passes he's thrown, he's thrown behind or right at his receivers, making them stop to catch the football and giving him no chance to do anything after the catch. So now third and 11. Clock is stopped with a minute 24 left in the half. 22 point lead for the Cowboys. They stunt, they loop, and they get to Hibble. Can they get him down? Yes! yes. Nice little line play. Richmond got him. And you know, you called it, Joel, inside. Tackle ends twist. Defensive tackles can twist. You change rush lanes. And here he comes. Richmond right up the middle. Flushes Hibble. Now Hibble, there's, there's complimentary pressure outside, making Hibble bounce. And Richmond closes on him and finalizes. Great effort up front by Oklahoma State. We've talked way too much about Blake Ferguson for the Sooners. He's their putter. And he is going to hit it for the sixth time already. Uh, this might be the most punts in a game, and he's done it in a half today. Gabe Lindsay put it on the ground the last time. Looking up into the sun, and they almost got to it. Yeah, it made him shank it a little bit. He is going to stay away from it. Takes a sooner roll, but not much of one. In fact, Bennett hops back past the 32 to the 33. So the Cowboys, how much do you want to gamble? I don't think very much when you're at home with 21 seconds to play and you've had a near perfect half. Kareem Smith, the backup defensive lineman, got nice pressure on the punter and made him just kick it off the side of his foot a little bit. Didn't finalize like he wanted to, Blake Ferguson. And Les Miles, he's got a lot to be thankful for, it being the Thanksgiving season. Not only is his team playing well today, but he had a brain tumor removed in December. He's got his health back and his football team's playing well. Good Thanksgiving for Les Miles. It's Seniors Day for the Cowboys of Oklahoma State. They could have asked for a better first half. They have dominated their rivals from just about an hour, hour and a half away with a 22-point lead at the half. Let's head downstairs to Eric Clemens. Eric. Coach Miles, it seems like just about everything is going your way on both sides of the football. Your assessment of your team's first half of the um, they're playing well. It's just halftime. We're, we're, we're in a hell of a ball game. We're going to play like hell. Okay, good enough, Coach. Good luck to you Thank in the you. second half. Do not adjust your sets, folks. Oklahoma State leading fourth-ranked Oklahoma at the half. 28-6 to here at Lewis Field. They're for real, at least for a half. We're back here with the Nissan Halftime Report in just a moment. Cowboys have everything going their way. They won the toss, deferred to the second half, and now they're going to receive... The kick to begin the second 30 minutes of play. T.D. Bryant back deep along with Chris Massey. And well hit. Massey will take it about eight yards into the end zone. Cowboys have it first and 10 of their own 20. Eric, how do the Sooners feel, and especially Bob Stoops? Well, Bob Stoops, as you can imagine, Joel is pretty disappointed. He told me a few words. We just simply have to execute better. I think that might mean double teaming number 82 if you're on the defensive side for Oklahoma guys. I think so. Yeah, they'll probably be bracket it. coverage. There's no doubt about that, but you can't bite on those play fakes, and they did that. Well, I think, and, and Eric make a good point, and I think if they do bracket Rashawn Woods, you'll see Oklahoma State run the football, which they'll probably do a little bit with a 22-point lead anyway. Tatum Bell is a single in the backfield behind Josh Fields, who was 8 for 12 in the first half for 237 yards. So much for running the football. There's the bracket and almost intercepted. They went for TD Bryant. They had double coverage. Wolfolk should have come up with the interception. Yeah, up on the other side of the football field, straight, had great coverage. So they put TD Bryant on Wolfolk in this matchup, and, and, and the coverage was pretty good. I tell you, if, they're, if they are going to play cover two like that and help have the safety help from the middle of the football field help the corners, I think you see Oklahoma State run the ball, and I think you see Badger with a big tight end down the middle again. Second and ten. They'll counter it over to the right side. Bell tripped up. It looked like he was going to have a big game. 
Derek's great. He gets to him. It's a gain of four. It'll be third and six. Yeah, it looks like he uh, he slipped to the turf as he tried to make that violent cut. Something I could never think about doing. You know, you try to make a cut like these guys do these days. Ligament and cartilage strewn all over the field. There's the slide you're talking about on the last play. Otherwise, I think he might get the first down. Yeah, he just slipped sliding away, got on the edge of his skis and lost control. So third and six. Here they come. Showing the blitz up the middle. It's picked up. Fired on the slant. Complete to Woods. First down again to the 33. Rashawn Woods with another grab. That's his seventh of the day. Incredible. Rashawn Woods has been a factor over the top. Play action fakes. And Rashawn Woods has just run by people. Wolfhook is the guy in particular that he's matched up against him. That time he beat, beat Wolfhook and Baskin to the football. And tell you what, this one is just a great route. I mean, he just turned Wolfhook around. And he gave the football to Eric Clemens on the sideline right there after that third touchdown reception. He's now got 93 catches on the year. As Bell spins, bangs, gets it out to the 38 for a gain of five. But back to Rashawn Woods. He's already topped the single season mark, held by Hartley Dice, leading the Big 12 with better than eight catches a game. Tops of the Big 12, receiving yardage, better than 118 a contest. And I talked about it. Now it's 10 straight games, a measure of consistency. 10 straight with seven or more catches. That, that's the thing. Week in and week out. This guy is probably the hardest working wide receiver in college football. And he's going to give effort every single snap at the top of the screen on this particular play. Call it second and long five, almost six. Fields audibleizing, changing the play at the line from the 38. And single coverage. He wants to go outside and he does again to Woods for a first down. What a read by the quarterback because he had one on one for Woods and he was against straight the best cover man and they ran the fade you can run the fade at any point of the field straight's got great inside coverage turns to find the ball perfect throw by fields to the sideline and, and he takes Woods right to that sideline great throw and earlier the snap before straight beats Woods straight as Woods assignment in that running play and he took a bad approach and never laid a glove on straight so he's trying to be the complete wide receiver we've seen him throw some good blocks today not on that one Bell with a seal to the outside Bell into the secondary gets nine call it eight on first down Perkins possibly saves the touchdown you mentioned it at the top of the broadcast Joel Josh Fields is a sophomore Rashawn Woods is a junior and these guys are in such sync and their timing is so incredible. They got another full year to enjoy each other. They're going to put up some serious numbers here in Cowboy uh, annals that'll be tough to break. Throw Tatum Bell in there. He's a junior. Then Seymour Shaw is only a sophomore. And other than the offensive tackles, they're very young inside and the offensive line gaining great experience as well. Second, a little more than a yard. Fields changing up again at the line. Talk about a kid with confidence. Will it pay off? Quick out. Woods is there. Knocked out of bounds inside the 15. He realized the slot man had single coverage. That meant Woods did on the on the boundary. And Wolfhook knew he had Woods, and he gave Woods about a 10-yard cushion. So under the first down for the Cowboys, and we've got a first tomorrow night for you. ACC Sunday Night Hoops. First matchup of the season on Fox Sportsnet. It'll be Wake hosting Temple. That is tomorrow night, 6 o'clock Eastern, the first every Sunday night at the ACC on Fox Sports Net. So the drive starts back at the Cowboys 20 and they pick up right where they left off at the first half. They've almost got 400 yards of total offense. 379 and counting. And the yards per play is off the chart. Phenomenal. It'll be Bell. No, a play fake. Middle. Defunded oh. touchdown. You know things are going well. The tight end, Charlie Johnson. Went right through the hands of the of the linebacker Lance uh, Mitchell. I mean, it was right in his hands. It goes through his hands and right into the receiver's breadbasket. Underthrown a little bit. Mitchell gets up, gets his hands on it, right through those hands, and secured for the touchdown. What? I, you're right. When it rains, it pours. Charlie Johnson, the beneficiary. Luke Phillips for the point after. And this is hard to believe. It really is. Amazing. Oklahoma State by 29. 
So Mitchell read it well. He did everything but knock it down and intercept it. College Football Saturday on Fox Sports Net. Brought to you by Kia Sarah. One company, countless solutions. By Dr. Pepper, your local Dr. Pepper bottler. And the Cavett Collection, imported from Italy. Make it interesting. Team of Savage and Perkins waiting for the kick from Phillips. In fact, Cole Parton will kick it away. Not Phillips. Low line drive over to the near side. And Savage will bring it back. Antoine Savage tripped up across the 20, only out to the 23. So the Sooners get it for the first time, but that's after giving up an 80-yard drive. You know, Joel, in the last four and a half games, little over four and a half games now, Josh Fields has 16 touchdown passes and one interception. Coming into today, uh, 12 touchdowns and one interception in the last four games. At a little more than a half, he's got four more today. 16 to 1. What a ratio. Unbelievable. He's got only 12 completions today, Dave, for 299 yards compared to the numbers you see for Nate Hibble. With just 58 yards passing. And that's in only one fewer completion. Taking it across the 25. Griffin gets it out to the 30 yard line. It's a gain of seven on first down. Robinson finally got to him, the middle linebacker. So you don't want to quit and give up on the running game completely. But almost four minutes by the time you snap it, gone in the third quarter. That, that's the other key. If Oklahoma State can play keep away and continue to score points, there's nothing that Oklahoma's offense can do. They can't score enough to get back in the football game. Oklahoma State scored on all but two of their drives. In the first half, one was a missed field goal. Swing to Griffin. He's got the first down. And he's across the 40-yard line. Going out of bounds with the first down into his own 43. Darren Williams shoved him there. Well, the thing that the coaches say about Quentin Griffin is the most unselfish guy on the football team. The first one to practice, the last one to leave. Bob Stoops said seven or eight games into his freshman year, I asked him to give up his red shirt. Because we had to have that done to, to finish the season the way we wanted to. to, to to go to a bowl game, potential bowl game. Griffin gave it up for the good of the team. And that's been his trademark his whole career, unselfish. The unpredictability of college football on display today. Nobody could have expected this. There's a hold. Hibble gets it away, and it's a trap. Could have been a hold call, but it won't be. He wanted Will Peoples down the middle. There's the rush end on the outside beat the right tackle. Yeah, Greg Richmond was talking to the officials, saying, I can't believe you're not going to call that. And it was a takedown. It's like a wrestling takedown rather than a pass protection. So now second and 10 from the 43. Hibble's got 19 attempts. Before it's all over, he'll have close to 40 today. That's a given. They go trips to the wide side. Now Smith goes in motion to the tight end. The draw for Griffin. And Griffin takes a shot at the 45. Chris Massey, the safety, just waiting there. You know, it's just uh, Oklahoma State reading their keys so well in that shotgun running game. And Massey, this is a run blitz. Massey gets picked up temporarily, separates, and, and but he consumes a couple of blockers to, to, to get it done. Actually, Massey uh, finishes the play. And it was uh, Robinson that consumed a couple of blockers on the run blitz to clear the way for Massey. Works in Griffin. Flanking and Hibble on third and seven. Deep ball, jump ball, and flags on the play yeah. as they wanted Will Peoples. Defending, Vernon Grant never turned around and got contact early. Exactly. He pushed them well before the arrival of the football. So mark off of 15 automatic first down. You can see he's actually losing his balance a little bit and pushes off, turn, tries to turn to find the football late, but that left forearm had pushed Peoples well before the ball got there. So the penalty turns out to be a conversion on third down. 35 to 6, Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State, though, not a shock that they can score points because they have been above 63 times this year. They have put it together on the offensive side with the confidence growing with their sophomore quarterback Josh Fields. 
But to do it against Oklahoma, that is the shot. It is. They came in winning four out of their last five games. They've been hot. The Blitz, they pick it up. Hibble with single coverage going deep as his man just out of the reach. As he tried to get the long ball to Antoine Savage, he hasn't looked Savage's direction all that much as leading receiver. Good job by Vernon Grant that time. Yeah, they are picking on Vernon Grant a little bit and caught him for an interference that time he rose to the occasion. But Oklahoma State is, is coming after it, boy. They're, they're heating up. Bill Clay's got the lead, and he's being aggressive, blitzing. They need 10 on second and 10 with the line at the 31st down line, sponsored by Capital One. They use Smith as the motion man and run back the other way with Quentin Griffin. He tries to get lost in the middle. Gets four to the 36. Time is very precious, though, for the Oklahoma Sooners. They cannot afford six and seven minute drives. No doubt. Oklahoma State is definitely uh, an enemy. But the clock is as well. When you're down 29 points with less than 10 minutes to play in the third quarter, you get problems. Dave, our first game, Iowa State was down 24 to nothing and lost in overtime. Or lost with seconds to go when they were stopped at the one. So anything can happen. We saw that back in August at Arrowhead. No question. Third and six from the 36. Pocket collapsing. And Hibble will come up shot. Covered sack, Terrence Robinson. It won't be a sack because he did get a yard, but that's super coverage downfield. It really, it, it, it's almost like Oklahoma State is in the huddle. And, and it, watch the coverage of these three on the on the trips. Watch them unfold, and they're all over it. I mean, you know, they just clamp down on every single one of them. No crossing patterns, no picks, nothing like that. And Oklahoma State just unfolded on him and just clamped on him. It looked like Velcro. Chanel, fourth and five. This is going to be the first fourth down try for either team today. Oklahoma tops in the Big 12 when they've had to go on it. Fourth down. Here comes the all-out blitz on Hibble. And it'll fall incomplete. They brought everybody. Shy the tight end, Lance Donnelly, and the Cowboys take over on downs. Yeah, they brought more than Oklahoma could block, that's for sure. They made Hibble throw the ball well before he wanted to. So the pressure got to Hibble and the Sooners. It's been that kind of day for Oklahoma State leading 35 to 6. The disappointment so apparent on the Oklahoma Sooner sideline down 35 to 6. These two schools getting together for so long. And Oklahoma has won 73 times with only 15 losses and seven ties. But Oklahoma State's won four of the last seven in this matchup. And that, that was disappointment and shock, I think. Not just that they're losing, but how they're losing. They jumbo on the left side for Tatum oh. Bell. And the left side comes up out of his three-point stance. Was at the tight end. It looked like Bajima. Yeah, there was movement by Oklahoma in the neutral zone, and then the tight end picked his hand up almost simultaneous to it. That's what they're talking about now. Who had the first movement? Oklahoma defensive interior lineman was inside. I think they're going to call. They're probably saying Badgerman responded to that. Typical of the way things have gone today for the Sooners. So first and five from the 40-yard line. 8.36 left in the third quarter. Two straight wins over the Oklahoma Sooners. That is a major development for the Oklahoma State Cowboys program. And, and last uh, last game, you know, very close. This one, 35 to 6. Who would have thunk that? Same formation. They'll stay with the same play, you would think. Counter pitch. Tatum Bell gets the block, gets the first down into the secondary to the 49 yard line. And we're joined now by the head coach of the champions, the Big 12 North Division, and that is Gary Barnett of the Colorado Buffaloes. Gary, Joel Myers, Dave Lapp, Mara Clemens. First of all, congratulations on a very successful season and the win yesterday over Nebraska. Well, thank you, Joel. Appreciate that. That's, uh, that's a hard place to play, and uh, we went in and played pretty well. and. Uh, 
uh, held up through all the emotion of the, uh, uh, of the Nebraska crowd, and we were able to pull it off. The game kind of summed up your season, though, didn't it? The way you persevered, you were down early, and, it, and that's the way it was earlier this year because, Gary, Dave, and I were there when you lost your starting quarterback. Right. Well, it, it sort of did sum it up. It's, it's been that kind of year for us. We've had a lot of adversity, and, but we've, uh, we've held on. Coach, you know, you, you had a, a big matchup with Oklahoma during the regular season, and, and it seemed to be turnovers. You know, Oklahoma, obviously a good football team, but you, you were helpful in, 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 you know, not accomplishing that victory by those turnovers. I mean, are you guys looking for that rematch and keeping care of the football a little better? Well, obviously, uh, you know, we, we committed five turnovers for them in the first quarter and it really put us behind. And uh, we, I thought we played hard, and especially second half, played, played pretty well. But, um, you know, Oklahoma was uh, very opportunistic and forced some of those turnovers, of course, and then uh, we're able to take advantage and put points on the board. So. But as I'm watching this one unfold, I'm going to dust off some of those playoffs and passes. <laughs> I can tell you that. You know, that, that's the thing. I mean, o Oklahoma State got the running game going a little bit, and, and that's what you guys do so well. I, I, I love the way you guys play football, the way you establish that running game, and you got a stable of running backs that you can do it with, and that play-action pass is just, it hurt them against Texas A&M, and it's killing them today. Well, uh, Coach Miles got a nice game plan going on both sides of the ball. Their kids are playing with a lot of emotion, and uh, you know it looks like uh, it sort of caught Oklahoma off guard here a little bit, not quite ready for that kind of emotion. I mean, you know it's going to be there in this game because it's, it always is when they play, but it looks as though Oklahoma wasn't quite ready for it. Well, they, the Coach Miles and his uh, and his coach staff done a great job of uh, mixing personnel and formations, getting matchups big time. Yeah, they, they, Russ does a great job of that. He's got a lot of the NFL background uh, in his game plans. You can see it. And uh, uh, you guys there? Gary, how healthy did you come out of the win over Nebraska as we get ready for your matchup next Saturday in Houston? And I think we might have lost Coach Barnett. Might have lost him out. Yeah, Chris Brown. That's a that's a big key. Yes. He sat out yesterday's game with that bruised sternum. Hopefully he'll have uh, all hands on deck in that regard. But I really admire Coach Coach Barnett and the way he coaches that football team in Colorado. They always come out and give effort. Boy, it was a physical contest against Oklahoma the first time, and it will be again. Rare punt for Cole Farden. Perkins waiting. He'll take it to the 15. Pounded oh, the 25. And thanks again to head coach Gary Barnett. Gets an idea of some options now that might be available to his squad next Saturday, as he mentioned. So Billy Badgema, the tight end, big guy down on the special teams coverage. So the Sooners have it back, and they are in the deep hole by 29. It's been the Cowboys of Oklahoma State every step of the way. 635 left in the third, leading by 29. And we're rejoined by head coach Gary Barnett of Colorado. And coach asked, lost contact about the health of Chris Brown getting ready for Saturday. Well, uh, we're not going to know on Chris. He's hoping to be ready. Uh, he's had a lot of pain, could not play uh, last night, but uh, we're hoping he's back. But we won't probably know till Monday or Tuesday. Coach, I just uh, basically, you know, want to say I admire the way your team plays football. It was such a physical contest, your first matchup against Oklahoma. I'm sure it will be again down in Houston for the Big 12 championship. Well, I, there's so much at stake that I'm sure you're going to see that kind of game from both sides, and uh, we'll definitely go after each other. Coach, uh, happy holidays to you and your family and your football family, that being the coaches and players, and congratulations on another successful season. Thanks very much, Dave. Appreciate it. Thanks, right. Gary, for taking the time. Sure. Gary Barnett of Colorado, and now a little reverse action. Taking it to the boundary, it is Will Peoples. And they'll knock him down inbounds, short of the first down, near the 43. So we've got about seven on a little toss from Quentin Griffin. And you know, Joel, that kind of segues into uh, the fact that this is the last time for a while that Oklahoma and Oklahoma State will play the last game of the season. I mean, Oklahoma likes to have a little bit more time to prepare for Colorado for the Big 12 championship game. And, and this will go back to a, a regular rotation next year. It's probably scheduled for early November rather than uh, end of the month and uh, into December. Right. Now it's going to be able to pop up any time right. in the Big 12 schedule. And it's not going to be designated as the final game of the year as Griffin. He is pushed backwards. He needed three and he didn't get there. Llewellyn Brown and Pinson got him low. And, and Coach Barnett referenced the emotion with which Oklahoma State's playing. 
and that's the problem that Oklahoma saw with this is that they have to get up for this game, get up for the Big 12 championship game, then, you know, potentially a BCS scenario, and that's a lot to ask of the kids. So they, they wanted to get back in that regular rotation, and, uh, and we'll see how it all shakes down. Third and a little more than two. Two and a half yards for the first down. Probably four down territory just about anywhere lately. They've got it. They've also got Mark Clayton. Good yardage across the midfield stripe to the 46-yard line. Clayton, the sophomore from Arlington, Texas. You know, when you think about this matchup, you would think big plays. You know, who's capable of the big plays? All the athletes that Oklahoma has, you would think they were going to be the big play team coming in, and, and Oklahoma State would have to stop the big play potential. They have. But not only that, Oklahoma State, Rashawn Woods and company have made a bunch of big plays. They have had the explosive plays today, not Oklahoma. So multiple substitutions as Kiwan Jones. Their power back takes over in the eye. Hibble to the play fake. Wants to go deep. His man fell down. Gets up and almost took it in. Dropped it. Brandon Jones looked back and all of a sudden it was in his arms. He's a sophomore from Texarkana, Texas. Off balance and that hurt him when he finally recovered. Yeah, and, and, and you look at the shadows. The way the shadows are projecting the sun may have been a factor as well. Tomorrow night, first night of ACC's hoops. Rest of the college basketball season every Sunday night. It'll be the ACC on Fox Sports Net. It'll start with the Wake Forest Demon Deacons taking on the Atlantic 10's Temple Owls. That is tomorrow night at 6 Eastern. Second and 10 of the incompletion. Quentin Griffin, the Dr. Pepper. Big 12 player of the week has returned into the backfield flanking. Nate Hibble on the option. It is Griffin coming off a 207-yard rushing day last week. And he's pushed out of bounds with the first down. And a flag at the end of the play where you normally see a guy around the face mask. Antoine Savage, the wide receiver, had a great block. Took the Oklahoma State defender to the turf, giving Quentin Griffin a lane. It'll be a face mask. Now 5 or 15. Hal Dowden, a Big 12 official. Just the defense, five yards to the end of the run, first down. Not the major one, didn't tackle him by the face mask, got the hand up in the headgear. Great block right there that had the defender down. And, and boy, is it in the face mask. Oh, yeah, just a little bit at the end as he raked across the shoulder pads. That's five yards, if anything. I think that's a leave alone, but they did get five yards out of it. Jones takes over, and then Griffin shoved to the ground. It's hard to hard to get low enough on a guy 5'7". <laughs> little punishment at the end of that play, as we can see with his helmet bouncing back up. Hibble going into the end zone. Man, just out of the reach of Brandon Jones. Caught it. And he did get it. Unbelievable. Yeah. One he got it with the one hand. He put out the left hand. Fed it off the defender, a brilliant catch. I didn't think there was any way, Dave. And going away from us in the other corner, Brandon Jones came up with it. And the sun is in his eyes. Look at, look at the shadows at a 45 degree angle. Sun in his eyes, he makes a one-handed catch with that left hand. Tremendous play by Jones. Great effort. It comes with 420 left in the third quarter. They've got to go for two after the botched extra point try by DiCarlo. Uh, their only touchdown so far. But now, can they draw back within 21 points? And they don't have enough men on the field, believe it or not. Will they be able to get it off? Yes, they should. There's still 10 on the play clock. And Griffin checking in late. Spread the defense. They bunch him on the right side. Look at Griffin on the left. He was available instead. It's over the middle, and it's good. He's got peoples for the two-point conversion. Another you nice never play. know. Yeah. Three touchdown deficit for the Sooners with 420 left in the third 15. Unbelievable catch. Well, was it a catch? We're going to go back and look at this 35-14 ball game. Chris Massey and T.D. Bryant wait for it. It'll be Massey from the three. Now cut a field position for the Cowboys. He's got a lane. And then it closes in a hurry. As he tumbles down across the 25 of the 26. You be the judge. I thought it hit the turf. Well, here's the official. And watch. He stays back. Left hand. Tip. Brings it in. It does hit the turf. That You can't see from that angle. Can't see it. There's the ball on the turf. See the ball's on the turf. The ball helps him. Now, this is the better angle. 
The, the official gets his body blocked. The body blocks. He doesn't see the ball hit the ground right there. Ball's out on the ground. The ball helps him, uh, the ground helps him secure the catch. Should have been ruled no catch. So now the Cowboys moving the pocket. Bajima again. That was the one he caught, the 58-yarder. And it's thrown away. It wasn't intercepted. Picked off by Wolfhook, but out of bounds. Yep. So Fields out of the pocket nears the, needs to throw it away when you've got a 21-point lead in your own territory as opposed to just throwing it near the boundary. Well, Oklahoma was looking for a spark. Did Brandon Jones' questionable, controversial catch give him that spark? Let's see how close Wolfhook came. Catch. Low left foot in, right foot out. He had the catch, and the left foot was in. He tapped. I'll tell you what, he tapped that sideline. Just need to get one down in college football, and he did it. He got the left foot down. That's two in a row. Well, I think I just saw the challenge flag go out. <laughs> yeah, right. Second yeah. and ten. No can do. <laughs> the ball at the 26. Great play. The toss. Tatum Bell beaten alive at the 30-yard line. Boy, there's some punishing hits still in this ball game. Let's he did get that left foot. He dotted it, no, didn't he? Absolutely. You watch Wolfolk. You only need to get one foot down in college football. Ball's airborne. Catch. Watch left. Watch his left foot. Down. Possession. Foot down. Catch. Big time. Should be an interception. Not ruled that way. And now a big third down all of a sudden. Clock is moving. Third and six. You better keep up with the number 82 or is John Woods. He's next to T.D. Bryant. They put two to each side. They're to the wide side of the field. Fields, with time, finds his man for the first down. He's across the 37 to the 38. Taking it in. It was Rajon Woods. Thing Eric Bassey got to him quickly, but good throw. Yeah, the thing that Fields is doing so well, Joel, is he's seeing the field so much better as the season has progressed, and he's doing both of the A's much better. Anticipation and accuracy. Throwing the ball with the anticipation you have to against a fast defensive football team. Throw it almost before your receivers come out of their cuts, which he's done, and he's been accurate with those deliveries. That's a tough combination. Keeps the clock moving. The biggest enemy of the Oklahoma Sooners right now. <laughs> Bell making the miss in the backfield. And only two, two and a half. Give him three to the 42-yard line. Wolfolk on the corner with the run support. Bell bounced that from the point of attack, and the guy to the out ran was Teddy Lehman. With a win today, you talk about a program starting to make marks. It's for the first time since 88 that it's been a seven-win season for Oklahoma State. Little by little you grow. And they grew a little bit last year. It carried over, especially after the win in Norman. Now they've taken four of their last five. It'll be five of their final six before the bowl game. Quick one. Complete for another first down across the midfield stripe. It went to John Lewis. He has a touchdown on a fumble recovery early in the game. Derek Street defending on the play. My question is, when's the last time Oklahoma State has beaten such storied programs as Oklahoma potentially, Nebraska, and Texas A&M in the same season? I mean, if they pull off that trifecta, that's uh, that's rarefied air for this program. So they're not a basketball school anymore? <laughs> Two to the wide side on first down. And they still want to throw the football. And they want to go deep. Rashawn Woods out of his reach inside the five, working against Andre Wolfel. Well, we mentioned this earlier, and you might want to check it out. It all starts right after the first of the year this January, Fox Sports Net. Introducing 5-4-3-2-1. Show that takes you inside the world of extreme sports each and every night. Breaking news, highlights, insider features. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Extreme sports, my kind of games. January only on Fox Sports Net. Because Dave and I, we do live on the edge, don't we, Laugh? I'm telling you, man. I, I, those flips on the skateboard, no problem. Only my skateboard's as big as a surfboard. I love watching you up on the banister on your board. Oh, it's big. That's a big old <laughs> banister, too. It's a spiral staircase. <laughs> 35-14, inside of two minutes to play in the third. Bell, bolting his way, close to a first down, shy by a yard of the 39. And this is the bell that the Oklahoma State coaching staff was talking about. With less than two minutes to go in the third quarter, 
He's got the endurance now and the durability to be a factor into the fourth quarter when he's tired. You know, he was always, it was like the coaches told us last year, it was like he was playing a mile high ele elevation. Right. He was out of gas at the fourth quarter of games. Right, but he's built up his endurance. He's gained 12 pounds. He's stronger. He's breaking tackles. He's a factor in the fourth quarter, whereas in, in prior games, he had kind of checked out of it by then. 18 carries, 83 yards today for Tatum Bell. Now third in the yard. Will the drive stay alive? Fields wants to throw for it. He's waiting for Woods. Finally gets hit. Scrambling. He won't get there. Sack for the loss. Back at the 42. You gotta, have to think of punt who's coming up for yeah. the Cowboys. You got to start thinking field position here. And, you know, not only the clock, Joel, but make him go a long way, multiple plays. And in this game, turnover free for the most part. I mean, it's been very, very well played. The ball's been on the ground a couple of times, but haven't lost possession. And, and coming in, that, that was a big factor because Oklahoma plus 17 in the turnover department. Oklahoma State, great ball security today. Now they've held on to the ball for better than four oh. minutes. Bad snap. Perkins waiting for the punt from Farden. That was out of sync for the beginning. Well, that's because Jed Newkirk, remember he got hurt, yes. hurt that knee in the first half, and the second deep snapper Nowhere near as effective. That thing rolled back there. So it was only a four-yard punt. And now a break for Oklahoma. A very short field with 23 seconds left in the third quarter. Can they capitalize? College Football Saturday on Fox Sports Net. Brought to you by Kia Sarah. One company, countless solutions. By Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. And by Best Buy. Something fun for everyone. It's the number three team of the nation on the verge of a major upset, trailing by 21 to their arch rivals. Time for a hibble, and it's a low throw at the feet of Curtis Fagan. And it looked like he had pretty decent pocket protection. Yeah, he lame did. to see. He did. I, I agree with you. I didn't think his vision was obscured whatsoever. Just held on to the ball a little too long. And it hit him right in the, right in the hoof. So now second and ten. Savage has very few touches today. He came in as their leading receiver. In the slot on the short side of the field, Hibble out of the gun with two to each side. A little dump off, won't do much, and that'll be the final play as I brought up Antoine Savage. That's not what he was looking for. Terrence Robinson all over. So that is going to be the end of the third quarter. Cowboys still in control of the Sooners. 35 to 14. You're watching College Football Saturday presented by Kia Zara on Fox Sports Net. College Football Saturday presented by Kia Zero. Welcome to back to Oklahoma. What a great show. Still like seeing that. And we are in Stillwater. The Cowboys ready to ride into the sunset. I think they, they'll take the gal with them tonight. I think they'll take anything they want, actually. Dominating the Sooners since the opening play. And now the Sooners on a third and long, third and eight. Able to in trouble. Eludes Mitchell. Can he get the first down? No. He's short by a yard and a half. They've got to go for it, though, trailing by 21. Paul Duran, the redshirt freshman. Dell City, Oklahoma, making the hit. There haven't been any turnovers in the football game, but when Oklahoma has gone for it on fourth down already this game and, and didn't convert, and if they don't convert here, it's as good as a turnover because you get that short field like Oklahoma State enjoyed when they held Oklahoma the other time on fourth down. The Sooners have done so well in Big 12 play, they just don't know what it's like to be in this position. 25 and 6 in Big 12 games under Bob Stoops. Now, Hibble, after the play fake, he can run for it, I believe, and he will. Let's just see the there. spot. Yes, he's got it across the 49. He's got a turf burn to show for it, too. So, first down, right at the midfield strike. Move the chains. 
Good call. A little naked bootleg, a little fake run inside, and it sucked everybody into the middle of the football field and got Hilbo on the edge. Gutsy call. But there's one thing that Bob Stoops does not lack, it's guts. We've seen him make some incredible calls over the years. Able out with the gun on first down. Got to get a touchdown. You don't know how many more possessions you're going to get. Maybe three. Griffin down the sideline. Big first down. Stopping the clock using the sideline to the 33. Microsoft game summary. Well, it all started three for three for the Cowboys of Oklahoma State. Three touchdowns on their first three possessions. Sean Woods, Big 12 leader, fourth in the nation. And catches per game. He's got 10 today for over 200 yards, three touchdowns. Field's pretty efficient. 14 for 318. <laughs> Take that all day long. His yards per completion and, are and phenomenal. A yard shy of two for one in total yards offensively. Dave, 435 to 218. Yards per attempt, yards per completion, amazing. Now, single coverage on the outside of the ball out of the reach. Wide receiver, Curtis Fagan. Darren Williams doing a good job again. They've really gone after Williams. He's been involved since the first couple of snaps. Well, well he has, and he's risen to the occasion. And, and they've gone to him because he's the wide side of the field. You know, they, they put their, their young freshman, Vernon Grant, into the boundary, the short side of the field. So they, they ask a lot out of Williams. He's got two interceptions on the season. They didn't have any today, but boy, he has provided tight coverage for the most part. The numbers for Hibble. Not bad. Running the option with Griffin. Cut off at the pass. Still makes something out of nothing. He's incredible. Down to the 21st down Oklahoma. The balance again where he looks like his knee might be going down, right. but he's not out of the play. Right, he's got that left arm that he puts down and, and forms the tripod to keep his balance. He gets himself upright, and off he goes. Incredible balance. Very, very tough to knock off his feet. You get him in the open field with the pitch. Now you're in trouble because you make him miss it. Put that left hand down and then get up the field immediately. I mean, as soon as he writes himself, boom, he's north and south now. Approaching 13 minutes, the blitz coming. A hold. Let's see if there's a flag and it's overthrown. Trying to get it to Mark Clayton. Boy, that was almost a takedown in the line. It looked like it could have been the tight end, Lance Donnelly, grabbing Chris Massey, the safety coming in. And you know, Quentin Griffin, 5'7", 190 pounds. He has to he has to pick up blitzers, and he did on that time, that occasion, very well. He's uh, not not bashful. You, you know what? In blocking, low man wins. So when he sets up at 5'7", it's tough to get under his pads. They have been letting him play. Not a lot of flags today. And now second and 10 from the 20. Sooners get a break. Griffin, misdirection, tripped up down to the 16-yard line, a gain of four. Third down from there, they need six. Vernon Grant, the run support for the quarterback. He's a true freshman out of Duncanville, Texas. Nice block that time by one of the young incoming stars for Oklahoma, Davin Joseph. He's a freshman, high school freshman. Or a freshman, uh, well, we just, hope out, not. just out of yeah, just out of high school. It's an extension program. A true freshman now, Joel. He's a wrestler. Tremendous balance, long arms, great player. On third down, Hibble looks one way, comes back the other way, and he's got the first down. Mark Clayton. And no, he's not. I thought he was going to get inside the ten. He's tripped up at the thirteen, so it's going to be fourth and three. Have to go for it. Trailing by three scores. And three minutes just about gone to the fourth. You mentioned so this is basically the ball game. You can face it because you're only going to get a couple more possessions probably. 35-14 Oklahoma State. What about Hibble on the edge again with an option? Oh, Trent Smith. There he is. Down the middle. Touchdown Oklahoma. Trent Smith, you called it, partner. Yeah, he was in the slot. And he's a he's a red zone target, the big uh, All-American tight end. He's a load. He made himself available that time. 6'5", 230 pounds. He's more of a slot receiver than a, than a tight end, truly. And uh, they found him for the big score on on fourth and three. So now the potential is there for the Sooners. They need DiCarlo, who missed earlier. 
to split the uprights. And he does. So a brand new ball game. 14 point deficit for the Sooners. It's the closest they've been since late in the first quarter. 35 21 Cowboys. Here's Trent Smith in the slot. Watch him come off the line of scrimmage in this little swim move he gets to release. And then watch Hibble thread the needle. Watch the swim move as he comes off the line of scrimmage. Whoop, swim inside. Now he's got to keep his balance. Hibble threads the needle. Touchdown, Trent Smith in the slot. Nice play. Dan Cody to kick it away for the Sooners. They're only down by 14. Massey to the near side. TD Bryant over to the far side. And it's going to be taken by Bryant in front of Massey. Good communication there. Over to the left side, past the 20, spinning to the 25, and that'll do it. So now the Cowboys just need a couple of first downs. They've got to choose some time off the clock with 11.35 to play in regulation. And Oklahoma on the flip side of that defense, they're thinking two things right now. Take it away. Three and out or Four. turnover. Scrape. Yep. You got it. It's it's one or the other. They, you know, they in, in, in Oklahoma, their philosophy has always been aggressive and punch you and make you counter punch offensively. Today they've gotten punched. And they've gotten punched by Oklahoma State and they've had to counter those punches. First down line of the 35, sponsored by Capital One, who asked, what's in your wallet? Seymour Shaw weaving his way, fresh legs, but dumped by Derek Strait, the cornerback. It's a gain of only two. Every first down, you got to figure if you can run the football's 90 seconds. And if they can get two to three first downs, then they've got it inside of about eight minutes. And that's all the Cowboys are thinking. Can they chew up some clock? And they also don't want to go to the line. I know that you don't want to play too tight. Yeah, you don't want to snap it with 15 on the play clock. But you don't want to lose all your aggressiveness. That's what gets you that nice lead. The play fake. And underneath, Bajima, close to a first down. I think he's got it. Let's see where the spot is. No, he's short by a half a yard. Jetty Lehman on his back straight helping out. How big a third down is this? This guy has become a big X factor in today's game. You know, Rashawn Woods, everybody knows he's a star. But when they started taking him away with safeties, as this young Oklahoma State fan wants to be a cowboy, they decided, well, I'm going to go to my tight end. If they're going to if they're going to take the safety out of the middle of the field and help Wolfolk on Rashawn Woods, Badgman's going to come up big. And he has. He's been a factor in this football game. They're going to have to call a timeout, I believe. Let's see if they can get it off in time. Third to half yard. Quarterback sneak. They got it. We'll see where they spot it, but it looked like he got it across the 35. Linesman on the far side. They flip him the ball. He does have the first down. Yep. Went to that linesman. It was like a flying wedge. Everybody was in there. Everybody was in there real tight. I mean, it was like a big scrum in there. They, every, everybody in the formation. Look at this thing. I mean, everybody's there. I, all 11 guys. It's like, here we go. Scrum time. Let's all push. They called for the extra offensive lineman because they wanted the unbalanced left side. And they had him actually just in a gap behind the tackle and guard. So first down, Oklahoma State. Shaw he needs to stay in bounds. And a flag down to the play. He's knocked out at the 39. Let's see if that's a hold where it came from in the offensive backfield. Yeah, Lance Mitchell was saying he got held. I think they called it. Lance Mitchell was complaining vociferously. He got grabbed. One of the few penalties we've seen overall today. I mentioned not a lot of flags no for Oklahoma State. That is going to be their eighth compared to only four for Oklahoma. Only on the offense, 10 yard penalty. It'll be first down. It's, it's been well played. No turnovers, very few penalties. I mean, it's been a rivalry played at a very high level. That's what college football is all about. And the referees, as you mentioned earlier, Joe, are letting the players decide the game. And they're playing at a very, very high level and very efficient level. Very crisp afternoon in Stillwater, Oklahoma. About 50 degrees at kickoff. Here in the shade, it feels about 30. In the sun, close to 50. And now first and 20. Bryant got the block. Outside the 30, up to the 34. 
And giving up his body again was John Lewis, so he could get nine yards. That was Rashawn Woods, and, and you know, the throw that, that, that Fields made right there, he hit Woods in stride. How many times have we seen Hibble make his receiver stop to catch it or reach behind them to catch it? And that time, Fields put the ball out in front, and that's a, that's a tough throw to make, to make as accurately as he did, and he did it without any problem. And Woods comes off the field limping after making that catch when he went to the turf, a definite hitch in the get along. He'll take the snap right at the nine minute mark on second and 11. Need to go across the 45, near the 46. Fields, pocket protections there. A bullet. He's got a first down. Lewis came back to get it. Won't get the mark for the first down, actually. He's right at the 45, about a foot shy in the arms of Teddy Lehman. But again, displaying a gun was Josh Fields. And throwing with so much anticipation and, and, and putting it on the money. I mean, the ball's in the air before his receiver comes out of the cut. Bryant, semi-roll behind the right tackle, throws it back across the grain a little bit and, and just makes a, a, throws a dart. I mean, an absolute dart. Teddy Lehman, recovery. So now, adjustments for Oklahoma State. They go with the unbalanced line. Let's see if they go top heavy the same way they did. Yes, they do. There you go, your flying wedge you were looking for. Yeah, they're scrumming it up. Josh Fields, quarterback sneak. He's across the 45. It's going to depend again. And the way the linesman was running in, I think he got it again. Yeah. So they mark it over to the far side. If they do, he's got it. We're we'll going to measurement on this one, I believe. I can't believe they won't bring in the chains. They don't like the measurement, but I think he got it anyway. Yeah, I think he did too. I think he's got it by the nose of the football. If that's the case, now you start thinking about when Oklahoma wants to use their timeouts. There's 821 to play. It's a fresh set of downs. It's another 90 seconds running the ball. They've got it. 14-point lead for the Cowboys. Oklahoma has scored the last two times they've had it. Watch Denard here. Now, technically, you're not supposed to push from behind. And, and he's just he's just got uh, got fields. Now, what you have to do is be a good actor. And, and have the official think you're just blocking. He's not blocking. He's hiking fields over the line of scrimmage right there. And now uh, you're not you're not supposed to help a player thrust forward with impetus like that. Unusual angle to block from. Yeah, most definitely. First and ten. Is that Fields' better side? <laughs> <laughs> Close to the 46. And they'll give the options to the running oh, back. And what a torpedo that was. Wolf. Andre Wolfel. And he took the worst of it, I think. They're both hurt. They're both Shaw's slow to getting get up. up slowly, too. I think Wolfel took a leg, maybe a knee to the head. And Shaw's. Uh, yeah, helmet on the knee. All messed up. So a time into the field by the officials due to the injury it was 7.43 left. And there it is. The right knee on the helmet. Yep, right knee, right on the forehead of Wolfhook. He's semi-dazed as he goes to the turf. He's on, uh, he's got the six-point stance going now, though. He's on hands and knees, which is good. That seven-point is awful when the head's on the turf. Seven-point stance you want to stay away from. Him. Six points better than, a lot better. Slowly gathering his thoughts. They're asking him, are you in Norman or you in Stillwater? And he's looking at, huh? <laughs> I thought I was in Houston. Is it yeah. Colorado? Houston, we have a problem. Fortunately, it looks like the junior from Denver is going to be okay. I think so. But that does, that rattles you. I mean, I've, I've had that exact thing happen. You know, you, you get a knee right in your forehead and it just, it jars your neck, scrambles your brain. I mean, it's, it's a shock to your head for sure. The big story for the Oklahoma State Cowboys today, the combination that are going to be back again next year, Josh Fields and Rashawn Woods, who's already set a new single-game record for the Cowboys, and they've had some good ones. Hartley Dykes, he broke all his records from back in 88. Rashawn Woods with 11 catches today for 213 yards and three scores. That includes two 60-yard touchdown catches. And, of course, he made the game-winning catch last year against uh, Oklahoma with that little slant and go that he had. 
Made a tremendous catch. He, he, he catches the contested ball as well as any college wide receiver that I've seen. That meaning when there is decent coverage, Fields has so much confidence in him, he just puts the ball up and Woods finds a way to catch it. And right now, Wolfhook is still trying to gather his thoughts. He took a definite shot. Let's take a timeout. We'll cross our fingers for this young man. So our concern right now with Andre Wolfhook. Seven forty three left and good news. It looks like a bloody nose for Andre Wolfel. He's up and moving over to the sideline. This was the knee of the helmet. The right knee as it comes up. Watch the right knee. Boom. Right on the helmet. And sometimes the helmet comes down on the bridge of the nose. As he takes that kind of contact, the helmet shifts. The face mask goes down by your chin and the bridge of the, the top of the helmet hits right across the bridge of the nose. It looked like they had they were applying pressure on his nose to try to stop some bleeding. So hopefully that uh, was the biggest reason that he was down for the duration that he was down and he didn't suffer any kind of a concussion. So here we are ready to resume with 7.43 to play. It's a loss of a yard on the carry. Well, Seymour's jaw. Cowboys will have it their own 44. As the Cowboys led at the break 28-6. You know, I think it all started, Joel, when they introduced Barry Sanders at the 35-yard line today, and the place went nuts. Barry Sanders came back, and uh, the crowd absolutely went crazy. He got him in a frenzy, and it was all uh, it was all she wrote for the Oklahoma State offense after that. Fields out of the gun on second and long. He released Tatum Bell down the middle of the field. And if he throws it long enough, he had beaten Lance Mitchell. Right. That's another way to beat cover two. When the safeties vacate the middle of the field to go to the sidelines to help the corners on the wide receivers, you can put your tight end down the middle like they did with Bajima, or you can run your tailback out of the backfield, down the hash mark against the linebacker, and they had it. They had Tatum Bell, but as you described, Josh Fields a little bit short on the throw, and Mitchell was able to recover and, and, and make a play on the football. So now third and 11. What do you do? Do you run it? Take another 30, 40 seconds off the clock? No. Bassey. Pressure from the outside. First down catch. Who else? Rashawn Woods adding to his record setting total today, his 12th reception of the day. That time he get matched up with Perkins. It doesn't matter who they match him up with. Nobody's a match for him. His routes are so precise and so perfect, and he's done it so many times that he could do it in his sleep. And the separation that he gets is phenomenal. And Fields puts it right on the money. So that'll take it down to about five minutes if they hold on to the football. And the chances, very slim for the Sooners. They cannot get the, it's a simple game of keep away, and we've seen it before. Bell in the backfield on first and 10. Bell getting the blocks he needs in the secondary. Another first down for the 26. More and more, they're simply wearing down the Oklahoma front. Well, the guy that had the key block here is Denard, the fullback. Watch him with the, with the block. Denard inside. Boom. Nice little trap right there. And then the lane. Take advantage of. Pancake block. I mean, you get people on the ground, they can't make tackles. Oklahoma State decimating the interior of the Oklahoma defense on that snap. 45,000, maybe 1,000 Sooner fans here. 45,000 overall, and these Cowboy fans, they are not leaving early. Tatum Bell with a flag down. Right at the line of scrimmage from the linesman where somebody could have lined up. Offside, Lance Mitchell makes the stop. Matt, it's going to be procedure instead. Illegal, uh, illegal shift. Right, illegal shift on Oklahoma State. Moving more than one person and not getting set for a full second before the snap of the football. I don't know about you, Dave, but I am totally shocked by the development this afternoon. Surprised by the start of the game and still a bit in disbelief when a team 
can get almost 500 yards as Oklahoma State has done against the defense that's ninth best in Division 1A. 494 yards right now. They only give up 287 a game. And the, and the yards per play. I mean, Oklahoma, uh, they give up maybe, you know, about three yards per play on the season. It's right now, David, 8.7. And, and they've given up three times that today. It, it's phenomenal. Almost nine yards per snap. That's ridiculous. First and 15. Now you just want to hand it off and chew up the clock. Bell looking for the crease. Gets it inside the 25 to the 24. Eric Levins. All right, Joel. Talk about Tatum Bell. What a difference health makes. Battled all kinds of nagging injuries earlier in the season. Limited to 33 carries and 168 yards his first six games. Coming into this afternoon, the last five games, 107 carries, 662 yards, and eight touchdowns. That is a huge difference and, of course, a big contribution running the football and being elusive and powerful today, helping out that Oklahoma State offense and that play action, helping Rashawn Woods get open and run free all game long. No, no doubt about it, Eric. I mean, one, you know, it's the glove fitting the hand. You're right. Bell won't turn the corner but he stays in bounds and if you're Oklahoma you got to think about when am I going to use my timeouts Jenny Lehman weak side backer he's been all over the place there's, yeah. there's Bell, a seven point stance right. I was talking about that's not good so another injury timeout this time for Oklahoma State's Tatum Bell I wonder if he got his bell wrong it comes with 449 left in the contest boy he roll him over like that obviously uh he's still he's trying to determine what's happening i think he did get his bell rung a little bit and that's a bad sound i've had that happen it's like you make a long distance phone call and the phone's ringing nobody ever picks it up it just keeps ringing 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 and ringing you wait for the operator to say that's enough but it never picks up there is a bowl game in the future of Tatum Bell and the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Absolutely. So it'll be their first seven win season since 1988. We'll come right back for the final 449. College football Saturday on Fox Sports Net. Brought to you by Kia Sarah, one company, countless illusions. By Dr. Pepper, your local Dr. Pepper bottler. By the element from Honda coming this December. And by Xena. Digitize the experience. What an experience for Oklahoma State's Cowboys and their fans. Set out crowd as usual in Stillwater. Whenever the Sooners are here. And I'm cold just with watching that shot. I'm telling you what. A lot of antifreeze in those young men. Pumping through those veins is antifreeze. Shaw's back into the game. Trying to get out of an ankle tackle on third. At about nine. And a timeout is going to be called by Oklahoma. So the Sooners use their first. 4-14 to play. And right now, a field goal would wrap it up. And Luke Phillips. Will he be coming in? you got to believe they'll be going for a field goal attempt. It'll be about a 40-yarder. Oh, well, we've looked back at so many of the good ones on Fox Sports Net. Washington, Washington State last week. Washington State looking good early. Try to take the Apple Cup and wrap up a Rose Bowl burn, oh, but not man. so fast. Ugh. Jason Gesser out for the game, maybe out for the year. Anderson in his last of five field goals after missing three. And on Washington State's final possession, the pass ruled a lateral. Knocked down, recovered by Washington. A fumble recovery for the victory. Washington won in three overtimes over their arch rivals. 29 to 26. I have seen some very good Apple Cup games, Dave. That is a sight. Especially when they play at Long Lake, Washington, and Seattle. I'll tell you, rivalries are just great venues no matter where they're played around the country. I mean, it's just a it's a tremendous experience, and Les Miles is liking this one today. I mean, to follow up, you know, in discussion with Bob Stoops and his coaching staff, it didn't sit well with them. They're going to do something about it. Oklahoma State took it to them again. This will ice it. 40 yards away. He missed a 43 yarder early. They go up by 17. Oh. And yes. that should do it. Yes. The Cowboys should be able to celebrate because now it's more than just two touchdowns and two two point conversions for the Sooners. 
Luke Phillips, who did a number on the Sooners last year with 252 yarders in the 16-13 win, comes through again for Les Miles. Well, your wishes have been granted. Santa has come through. The Pokes in the 97th edition of the Bedlam Series. Taking care of the Sooners early and often with three touchdowns before the Sooners knew what hit them. Antonio, or Antoine Savage, going back with Antonio Perkins. Well, the field goal was big with 14 plays and 737 is even bigger. That's keep away at its best at an important time, and then to finish it with three points was monumental. Paul Farden to kick it away. He's had a workout today. And he is juiced up right out of the end zone. So the Sooners back at their own 20-yard line. We remind you tomorrow night it all begins. ACC hoops on Fox Sportsnet each and every Sunday night starting tomorrow night. Temple Owls taking on the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest. It'll start every Sunday night at 6 o'clock Eastern. So the Atlantic 10 invading ACC territory tomorrow night. Sooners need a miracle. Down 38 to 21. Beautiful football weather. And now just about a half hour, 45 minutes from sunset. Stillwater, Oklahoma. What a night it's going to be for these pokes. He grab his man, but he can't get to the sideline. Will Peoples tried to get to the boundary to stop the clock. Vernon Grant corralled him around the ankles. So the hurry up offense inside of four to play. Yeah, it's not going to be real still in Stillwater tonight, boy. The place is going to be rocking. Second and four. Hibble. As Savage, first down. That'll stop it momentarily to move the chains at the 36. They'll give him the six and seven yarders. That's not a problem. Yep, because it eats that clock up. Now that it, it stops to move the chains in college football, but they'll give out those little chunks. They don't want to give up one over the top. Hibble yeah, in trouble. Underneath, Quentin Griffin. Wow. He can make a miss, and he moves the chains again. In the open field, he's a lot of fun to watch. To the 48-yard line, Llewellyn Brown finally on his back. I swear I could chase him for 10 minutes in a phone booth and never touch him. Be a lot of fun to watch, though, Dan. <laughs> I know that. Just thinking of that scenario. <laughs> you have a visual. The completion to Mark Clayton short at about eight yards. Can't get to the sideline again. So it's going to be inside of three minutes to play. So the final three minutes of our Big 12 season on Fox Sports now. And what a year it has been. We have had some amazing games. It seems like everyone has gone down to the wire. Hibble for the tight end. He's got a first down inside the 20. Trent Smith taking it to the 19. The executive producer of Fox Sports Net is Bill Borson. Coordinating producers of College Football Saturday, Roy Hamilton, Gary Garcia. Today's game produced by Mike Kelly, directed at his last game with us, and he is going to be missed. So I was lucky enough to work with him at NBC, directed by Ken Fouts. Ken, we hope that we will see you again down the road. We know we will, but hopefully we'll see you in the front row. And you deserve the best, Ken Fouts, the best. Senior Vice President of Field Operations, Andrea Berry. Vice President of Field Operations, Karen Newman. Hibble on first down in trouble Whoa. and on his way down and just threw it away and it was almost picked off. I think they're going to say he's down anyway. Yeah, I and, he was down. and now it's going to be grounding. A penalty flag. Robinson and Paul Doran all over Nate Hibble. I thought his knee was down before he even threw the football. You know, if the knee's down, it's a sack. Intentional grounding on the offense. It'll be loss of down. That's the spot of the foul. Second down. It's just like a sack. The same, same deal. You lose the down at the spot, just like if you were sacked, you'd lose the down in the yards. Is his knee down before he delivers the football? Knee down? Yes. He's got the ball. That was a sack. I'll tell you who's going to be upset is Duran. Duran loses his sack. <laughs> have some other people we want to thank in just a moment. Whoop. Offside, three down for Hibble. 
And he'll go down across the 28 to the 27. We have an unbelievable group of people that we work with. Camera crew, well, the very best in college football. Great The pictures. guys that help us in the truck. Mark Johnson, MJR technical director. Kelly Donaldson, our associate producer. George Ryan, our audio director, who has to put up with us on a regular basis. Pete Smith and Eric Josephson on graphics. Thank you, gentlemen. And Frank Phillips kind of babysits us all. Our technical manager. Uncle Thanks, Frank. Frank. Uncle Frank. And I'll tell you, our camera guys, you guys got us some great shots of everything that what there was to get this year. You get, you got some stuff that, uh, man, it told exactly what was going on. Pictures worth a thousand words. You guys got some great pictures all year long. So the list could go on and on. Now there's a cowboy for you. Absolutely. Product of Oklahoma State, so he's <laughs> not living large at all. <laughs> but we do have an amazing group of cameramen and women. And also thanks to the Big 12 for the opportunity yes. to do this and all the sports information directors for their help, the coaches, the players. It's been fantastic. Thanks to Kevin Weiberg, Donnie Duncan, Tim Allen, Bo Carter. It has been a, a sensational year again for the Big 12 Conference. 218 to play with the flag down to the play. It looked like a little late hit. I tell you, the Tater. Tater does. Tater's down there on that field. Tommy Tate. Shot. You know, San Antonio's own Tommy Tate. The uh, the blocked punt. Little face mask uh, right right on the sideline as the play was was being finished. The blocked punt that we had, Kansas State Nebraska game. Tater got a heck of a shot on it right down the field, but it was like he was right there in the backyard. A little high end zone action right there. Jason Jason is the man. Jason's the kid, but Jason's got a world of talent, a world of experience already. 2.18 to play. First and goal. Oklahoma down by 17. Just wants to get it in for an onside kick. Oh. A diving ground. What a touchdown. Play. What a play. The tight end, Trent Smith, going parallel to the ground. So the ball looked like it might have been a little bit behind a great grab. Trent Smith caught 66 passes last year. This year, coming into today's game, it was about half of that. He was down in the 30s. But today, when he's had to come up big, he's come up very large. Here he is working right here. A little smash route, option route. Gets over the goal line, which is what he had to do. He's working on Massey, the safety. Runs a little smash route right there. Secures the pig. DiCarlo for the point after. At a 10-point deficit for the Sooners, so they need two more scores. Here comes the onside kick. We return to Stillwater. They're staying warm because they're on top. It's easy when you're winning. The Cowboys have won every step of the way today, in the trenches in particular, and early in the game. Now they can cover the onside kick. It's over. They have beaten the Sooners in just about every phase of the game, and that's a rarity for an Oklahoma team under Bob Stoops. But they've got to cover the onside kick. We've seen stranger things happen. 2.13 to play. Somebody's going to throw a block here, and somebody's going to try to recover after that block. It's a good high hop. Oh. Out of bounds. So the Cowboys will get it. It was touched. Peoples. Oklahoma State is going to have it. Peoples knocked it out. And is there a doubt about our Dr. Pepper player of the game? Rashawn Woods with 12 catches, 226 yards, and three touchdowns. And the guy that threw it to him was pretty good today as well, Josh Fields. But Rashawn Woods, that once the running game got established, Rashawn Woods was over the top of that play action pass, and Fields was getting it to him wide open, too easy. As Oklahoma's biting on those play fakes, and then he starts running his precise routes and getting separation from Wolfhook and company. He was just phenomenal all day long. Two timeouts on the board for the Oklahoma Sooners. They'll use them here with 2.08 to play in the ball, right at the 50. Seymour Shaw. About three on first down. And did he lose the football? No. They say he's already down. Already on the ground. It'll be second and seven. And the Sooners will use their second time out if they ever see their coach. Still hasn't stopped it. He's well, been he screaming for yeah, about 10 seconds for that timeout. He time lost out. A, oh, about 10 seconds on it. Yeah. Right at 10. Yeah. 
He says, I want to know why I didn't get the timeout given to me. I want to know why. I've been calling for it for a while. So Oklahoma will depart 10 and 2 if it stays the same as it is right now with a 10 point deficit. 6 and 2 in conference play, getting ready for the title game. The Big 12 title game in Houston next week. Oklahoma State, though, better bowl for them, Dave. 7 and 5 with the win today if they hang on. And 5 and 3 after going 4 and 7 in Les Miles' first season last year. And, and again, you don't, you hate to look back. It's, it's crying over spilt milk, and it goes all the way back to the opener, but. That 17 point lead in the third quarter against Louisiana Tech they end up losing the game by three. If they win that game, look where they are. I mean, eight wins, looking at a, a, quite a significant bowl. That it, this football team, this program is on the rise. And Les Miles, and offensive coordinator Mike Gundy, defense coordinator Bill Clay, and the coaching staff today, tremendous game plan, and the players went out and executed it. So now, second and seven. When they put it back into play from the 47. Under the first down, it's over. With only one time out of the board for Oklahoma. And the Cowboys would have closed out the regular season. Winning five of their last six. Ooh. There's a free five. Yep. Can't listen to the quarterback. You know the best part of it all, Dave, and you experienced this playing your college ball at Syracuse. It comes for 22 seniors, the last time they'll play on their home field in Stillwater. You're right. That's a memory, a lasting memory. Tommy Harris is the is the down lineman that jumped in the neutral zone, and Tommy Harris hasn't been himself all year long. You can see he's running gingerly to the sideline. He's only about 70, 80 percent with that groin injury that he's had all season long, and it's really affected his lateral movement. But what a ball player! Groin or not, that wasn't the reason he jumped offside. He got uh, induced by the hard comp, the voice inflection by Fields. He was a defensive freshman of the year in the Big 12 last season. First team all Big 12. He's only a sophomore. So now, need a couple of yards. Don't get it. It'll bring up, and the Sooners will stop at a final time. It'll be third and two at the 42. And, you know, we, we talked about a lot of the skill guys. Fields, Tatum Bell. Deshaun Woods, but it starts up front in the offensive and defensive lines for Oklahoma State controlled the line of scrimmage and Les Miles knows as a former lineman for Bo Schembechler at Michigan if you don't perform well up front you're not going to be able to win the football game and he's got to be proud of his interior line play on both sides of the line of scrimmage today. Get a head start on the NFL weekend in fact you can get it tonight. It all comes your way tonight at 10 30 the NFL show. Presented by the U.S. Postal Service. And tomorrow morning, you can see it as well at 10 o'clock Eastern, 7 out of the West Coast, only on Fox Sportsnet. Get your fix. The NFL Show. Later tonight on Fox Sportsnet. Les is going to be undefeated against Oklahoma as a head coach. 2-0, huh? When you can win consistently, ask the former Ohio State Buckeye head coach, John Cooper, what a 2-9 mark against Michigan meant to him. Yeah. And look was at, gone. And the reason that uh, the people love Trestle, or one of the reasons up at Ohio State, undefeated this year, but he's 2-0 against Michigan. You got that. And that, uh, that makes the season. So now the ball game. Two more yards for Oklahoma State. And they can start the party here in Stillwater. Sections that contain the Sooner fans are pretty well cleared out. Those are the only empty seats in this ballpark. The counter, no. Fields on the edge, and he's got the first down. Slides, inbounds, first down, game over. And you know, Joel, just going to note here, Les Miles, the only Oklahoma State head coach to beat both Nebraska and Oklahoma in the same season in school history. It's never happened before in school history at Oklahoma State. So a nice little feather in Les Miles' cap right there. Start the clock, and now Oklahoma cannot stop it. They couldn't stop Oklahoma State in the first half. Trailed the break 28 to 6. They were on the downside all day long. It was a shock. There's no doubt about that. Oh, and there, Les just got wet. A very cold <laughs> shower. Oh, man. You know, he's got mixed. He's cold, but he's a happy cold. 
He looked back at the guys that did it. <laughs> he goes, you'll get it. You'll, oh, you'll pay. Oh, oh, they got him again. Oh, no. <laughs> man. This whole, this whole stadium oh. is living through their players on the sideline. What an experience. Man. What a renaissance for this whole program to come back like this. Really. And, and, you know, it wasn't like they didn't have Oklahoma's attention. Oklahoma upset about last year's upset in Norman. I think it's the only home loss they've had in, with Bob Stoops. Oklahoma One more State snap, and are you ready, Dave? It's official. Yep. The Cowboys beat the Sooners for the second consecutive season. Look out. Two guys that are going to have some great battles down the road. Hey, good luck in the championship. Two flag sacks right there. You heard Les Miles. Hey, good luck in the championship. He wants the Big 12 South, which he's a representative of, to beat the Big 12 North. So he said to Bob Stoops, good luck against Colorado in the championship. And here come the goalposts. And you know, oh, I hope nobody gets hurt because it came down quick. It snapped in a hurry. Yeah. So everybody, take care of yourselves down there. We talk about that frequently. So they walk off with one set of goal posts very quickly. I do don't think do? the other is going to be safe before too long, although they've got plenty of security at the other end. What do you do with those goal posts? <laughs> Where do you put them? Let's head downstairs. Join Eric Clemens. Eric. Coach Miles, I know you want to sing. We're going to be real quick. Uh, the first OSU coach to beat Nebraska and Oklahoma in the same season in this team. What a way to finish five out of six. It's, it has nothing to do with me, I promise you. It's these guys, these coaches, their willingness to work hard and prepare. And this team's gotten better every game. And we have yet to play our best football. Okay, so you're headed for a ball game. You don't know where yet. But game plan, talk about that a little bit. Rashawn Woods with that Sandy good. So is the entire offense and defense. Rashawn Woods is as good a wide receiver as there is in the country, bar none. We call on him all the time. Um, you, you know, when we need a big play, we go to Woods. What, what did Coach Stoops say to you afterward when you agreed with him? He was very gracious in defeat. He, was, uh, he congratulated us just like I would expect him. Very, very good man. I know, I know this is the Bedlam series. Uh, have you got all the fever of it yet? I mean, these fans are around here ready to attack you after I get through. Has it gotten in your blood yet? It was a hard-fought victory, and we're going to celebrate well into the night. <laughs> Coach, congratulations. Thank you very much. Very victorious coach here, guys. Let's go back up to you in the booth before I'm run over. <laughs> well, Bedlam is the proper term for what is going on downstairs as they celebrate their second consecutive win over the Oklahoma Sooners. Last miles. That is exchanged each year. The winner receiving that trophy. And it stays in Stillwater. 38 28 in the final. Come right back to Lewis Field. Complete performance by the Cowboys of Oklahoma State. The score doesn't truly indicate how they really ran away and hid from the Sooners of Oklahoma, winning 38 to 28. Don't forget to watch tomorrow. ACC Sunday Night Hoops back on Fox Sports Net Temple, matching up with the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. It all starts at 6 o'clock Eastern, 3 Pacific right here. For some of you, the Big 12 postgame report is up next. First 10 provided by Princeton Video Image Incorporated. For Dave Lapp, Eric Clements, I'm Joel Myers. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for being with us every step of the way in a great year for the Big 12 Conference. Our privilege to be a part of it. So long, everybody.